Word Balloon is brought to you by the League of Word Balloon Listeners. Every part of comics and artwork is a form of communication with other people. It's not just a, here, let me direct my thoughts at you as a dictation of concept, but it's hoping to convince you of how cool you think a visual could be or a story could be. And you're trying to communicate ideas and in one part storytelling and greater part just graphic impact. You're hoping to relate a sense of energy, urgency, and enthusiasm to people that there's a lightning of spirit that comes out of superheroes that has always worked for me. That it isn't really about the practicality of what they might do about, it's not the practicality about grown men punching each other in costumes. It really isn't about that. It's a visual metaphor. And that metaphor could be for a lot of things, but it's mostly just about the energy and enthusiasm that can be found in the fun of life. Chico and the Man will not be presented this evening, and the Rockford Files will be seen one hour later than normal, so that we may bring you the following special program. All right, we're back. Welcome again. It's time again for Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntress here. Brian Michael Bendis here because it is time again. And we're going to cover our faces for a second to show you this. Another edition of, uh, where the hell is it? There it is. What are we doing? Oh, Look at that. Oh, well, I made that, but it looks like you wrote that. So whoever made yeah. that, they, they have an embedded script, it looks like. Nice to see you. No, no, it's legible. If it was in my handwriting, you would not be able to tell. It would say the, anyway. <laughs> Very good to see you. Thank you for having me back. This is uh, uh, one of our longest uh, adult relationships between the two of us. This is this podcast. But, um, so, you know, so people know, I was thinking that, but maybe some people tuning in tonight may not know how, where we, our history, where we come from. But uh, this, um, the, these Bendis tapes, as we refer to them, started uh, many years ago. How many years ago are we thinking? Fifteen. 2016. I thought even more, maybe even 17. I thought, but well, I started in, I started 16 years ago in 05. Okay. Our first talk was in January of 06. And then I saw you at the first modern New York Comic Con at the Javits Center when we were all locked in. It was the, con the convention. Oh, I remember of the, that one. The that convention of the damned where they locked down the room and we all just had to keep spinning around this little room and everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you're like, you know, I got a ton of like questions at jinx world at the message board and uh i i you know i can't get it through can, can we do this again and i'm like absolutely so we started doing it and you and i got slap happy like in four hours like you know <laughs> the oxygen was leaving the room and we're just like laughing at everything and yeah well, so that's 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 when it began man yeah Ma march of uh march of 06 i want to say well so kids what a message board is it's a place where people used to now, i um uh, yeah, no, I, I, I thought we would like let people know, like we, we got together years ago, like in the earliest days of, of podcasting yes. and started just, it started as like a, uh, Q and a, like, uh, cause I didn't want to type anymore. So we took all the questions from the message board and we brought it to the podcast and then, uh, off to the races. Now I took a break, uh, and I just want to make that clear. You were, uh, uh, very patient and loving about inviting me on uh, as often as as you could. I, in pandemic, found myself uh, uh, not in podcast headspace, and it's uh, uh, I, I I know others can probably imagine such a thing, but you know, like others, I I came to this goddamn thing uh, pre-traumatized, and uh, and then when things. Um, uh, like good news w was coming in. Um, uh, I, I was like, I don't, I don't want to go tell people good news. Like the, the world's burning. 
So I I uh I just decided to just like you know stay chill. But I I did, I felt like a, a pull towards coming back to this and right. was excited. And you know, I, I when when the Dark Horse deal was coming together a few months ago, I, I did tell you that I, I here's what I want to do. I want to let's get all the ducks in a row and then we'll have something substantial to talk about on a few levels. And uh here we are. Here we are. Yeah. And in fact, uh, in anticipating uh, joy operations. Thank you. Look at you with the cover up there in the sand. Absolutely, I appreciate you know, I, that. Well, I, I I trimmed it better for the uh, for the billboard, but that's all right. Um, let's oh, start. Oh, with wait, that. there's chat. I didn't see. And hello to everyone in the chat. I already see uh, some names of people that I dearly love. Thank you, and 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 uh, it's very nice to see everyone again. Yeah, absolutely, man. No, and you know, yeah, people from the uh, from the board are are all. Uh, chiming in i know well well when facebook went down today a couple of people hit me with can we get the board back and i'm like you know and like and it's funny like even early in the pandemic i i had a couple of people come up and say hey let, is there a way to do that and I, I mean i really thought about it and i asked around in this modern social media could we run a message board with the same kind of razzmatazz that we had back in the day and no, I don't think that that could it could it could happen. So uh, so in lieu of that, I started the Substack uh, newsletter because it seemed to be like a way for me to post something substantial and then have feedback and back and forth. So th that'll that'll be there. But I boy, I thought about it. I, I thought about it a great deal because when it would be nice, we did we did have a great time, and that was relationships that have that have thrived to this day uh regardless of our interaction with them they're just uh, people out there enjoying their lives and i'm very proud of that that's just good energy but well you're yeah you're seeing it right now from the chatter here uh god oh, okay. I, you know a couple weeks ago i had uh, joe henderson on mm -hmm. talking about the wrap-up of lucifer and joe's an old bendis board guy mm -hmm. and you know b clay moore and fraction and hickman uh, Hickman, certainly. Yep. Absolutely. No. So, no, you're right, man. I mean, I, I was a Bendis board member before I started the podcast, of course. Yeah, I I, I, I will say I'm I'm very proud of all of that. Yeah, that that that, 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 that makes the da the dad part of me goes. Oh, yeah, it's very sweet. <laughs> no, but it's true, man. Honestly, we all I mean, and I'll include myself in there. We all like kind of pursued our creative ideas. And it's I mean, I feel a kinship to a lot of the comic creators and the screenwriters as well of. Hey, look what we're doing. Isn't this awesome? Well, like the whole point yeah. of it wasn't like originally it was like, uh, you know, look at me. But like, really, it's about let's all come together and share our creative energy. Uh, all of us, you know, in comics really feels like a unique creative energy that, oh, you get it. And even in comics, there's people who don't get each other. Right. But but there are people who really do. And it's like the only people that get it on all the levels right and so when you put a message board like that together and you have people who feel that like you know that pull towards each other because of that unique creative energy you know joe henderson's like a perfect example i don't know joe like we're not we're not like friends but like i know we we share a, a similar creative juice and 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 i'm very 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 happy and i know like david mack is too and oming that like that environment was healthy and and, and yeah. let people feel like yeah let's do it like that's all we ever wanted and it sometimes it takes years to find out if that works like like i hope this place does that thing that you wanted to do and 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 here we are years later and well look i've got showrunners and people with comics and it's it really it, it's really fantastic and oh. again i'm not taking credit for anything i don't know but I, no. I but i liked i like i like that it was part of it well, we all showed up and it, you built this. I mean, message boards are the best thing, were the best thing about the internet in terms of building community. And and truly, you can't recapture that now because. I, I really thought about it too. I wanted really people think that every once in a while, I really like, is there a way in? Am I just not seeing something in my oldness that, that, that that's out there? So I do. I ask, if there, is there a way to do it? And, and it just, it, things have just turned into a place where you cannot have an open like an open wall and not expect um you know holocaust deniers to come in well, and i mean 
Tell me well, what happened to my grandparents. Yeah, I mean, we were we were having political arguments in the innocent time of uh, John Kerry versus George <laughs> uh, George Bush. Exactly, man. I mean, that's the crazy thing. So, no, I remember. And I've certainly pulled back from a lot of my heat that I was throwing back then. And I think we uh, all were. And it's yeah. just... It's it sad. was a different conversation. It just it was. was. Yeah. 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 Well, and you could have a civil back and forth. And now, mm-hmm. forget about it. Forget mm-hmm. about it. Either you agree or you don't. And it's like, all right, well, let's not talk about that. Let's. Isn't that? It's so sad at the shows, too, man. Because at least we had the common love of the nerd culture. And it was like, fine, you know, leave your politics at the door. But again, it has permeated everything. What are you going to yep. do? What are you going to do? Anyway. What are you going to do? Exactly. All so right. um, before I want to see what you're doing with Substack. So sure. please let, let's talk about that for a second. So, yeah, well, really, because, you know, uh, a, a lot of people are doing various things. Snyder mm-hmm. is teaching writing mm-hmm. Hickman and, and a lot of others are making comics for it and everything. Uh, I even briefly talked to Oming about um, or actually, I guess I talked to Omi about his uh, his book with Snyder, the Blue Book. It's, no, his book is with Tinian. Uh, oh, pardon me, Tinian, of course. Very good, and I, I must say, I, I would like to plug that. It's called Blue Book, and it's uh, it's, it's Tinian who is at the top of his game, and uh, my darling Mike Omi. Now, Mike Mike loves Alien and Alien Agenda and Alien Conspiracy, and I'm not talking about he just listens to Art Bell in 2003. I'm talking about. He went to conventions. He went to Area 51. He'd been missing for a couple of weeks. I don't know where he was. The, this kind of real stuff, right? So, and that's where all the alien stuff uh, kind of made it into like the the middle chunk of powers. Like all the, like literally Alien Agenda and Jim Mars made it into like kind of like, uh, uh, you know, the underpinning of our, of our book because I was trying to write towards what I know inspired Mike at the highest level. Uh, I, what I should have done is done what James has done is just stop what you're doing and write and write this guy, his, his alien opus that he's dying to do. And I, I, uh, um, I just think James was right on the money calling Mike for this material and, uh, and a great way to use that Substack platform. I just really, and also Mike um, Oming is like, a great artist for that platform too. Just his style lends perfectly towards what 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 that what that material needs to be. Just love it. No, I'm excited for that. And uh, God, you remember uh, Mike and I made that TV show, The Unexplained, not the show. Yes, well, yeah. I I'm always hesitant. Like, what happened to it? I we don't. Well, you know what happened? Um, the production company that made it got swallowed by another company. And it only aired. This is this sounds like the most bullshit story, but it's true. It only aired in Canada and Germany. Well, and I have I an even weirder story. I had a show that cost lots of money that aired on a game platform. Yes, you did. <laughs> Two seasons of Powers. You're absolutely. Yeah. I was just telling someone about. It was on a PlayStation. Yeah, and and, and what a shame it was. That again, unf- I mean, it was a good gamble at the time. Everyone, was- no, it was. I'm th- I was every single second of that was a blast behind the scenes. Yeah. It, it was a unique experience. We loved every second. I'm just joking. Like when when you say it out loud, like I I recently had to like describe that to someone, and it's literally like telling someone, uh, the Godfather is uh, like on, on the GameCube. It's like like what? What are you saying? Like, like not comparing myself to Godfather. I'm just saying, just like. Your media isn't it. It doesn't match. The words don't match the sentence. No, it didn't make sense. I'm with you. It, it, yeah. didn't, it didn't make sense. So, Substack- but also, Am, uh, Amazon has powers. It's on Amazon. Oh, Plus. hey, that's so awesome. It, it, it lives. Okay. It lives another day. So that's I'm wonderful. happy. I'm happy it found um, a little a little nesting place in the streaming wars. That's all I wanted. Just oh yeah, go away. Well, and like you said, you got two seasons out of it. It was Mike. Yeah. Yesterday. We were talking about it when I had Mike on and Mags and uh, and Taki on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was watching that, and then I was like, I hadn't talked to Mike in a couple of days, and then I was watching it, and I I went, I, I could call him, and I did. I like hung up your show, and I called him on the phone. I've, I've never done that before. That's awesome. You know, it's great. Mags and I like went on for like another forty five minutes about st- new Star Trek, and it was a great conversation. And you know, I'm, I'm I have my issues with new Trek. Yeah, I, I, I am very aware. Yes, I know everyone is. It was also fun to watch, just so you know, it was fun to watch Taki 
to really try to get there with you and just not be able to do it. Well, they stayed on for like another 45 minutes after we were done. And I kept telling Mike and talk, I'm like, you know, you guys can go. And it was great because Max, I, I'm like, I'm not here to change your mind, Max, but I really do want to know what you like and what you don't like. And Max was going chapter and verse of everything that, you know, appeals and doesn't. And I'm like, that's great. And I'm like, you got to come on my Star Trek show because we we really need to have this discussion there. But they were, they're like, I swear we're loving this because we don't have the passion you guys do. And to see you guys just go back and forth and everything. So that was really fun. That's amazing. So, and it was nice meeting Max. Yeah. Oh, that they're was great. your first, that was your first show? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Great. No, they're great. So Max, was, great. Was Max great. did the Jenny Hex uh, one shot for us. I'm hip. Yes. Big fan of Mags. Absolutely. And, I, and I do remember. Absolutely, man. So, um, oh, that's interesting. Jimmy says uh, he wants Joy Operations to have a Mignola cover. Uh, well, we're in the right place to make that happen. I haven't asked for that. Um, uh, uh, we actually have some wonderful cover work coming up on all of our Dark Horse books. Um, some uh, people who were not, were not available to us at, at DC or Marvel and... Uh, 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 my, my old friend, Jill Thompson is due did just hey. handed in a pro cover and Jill is someone I actually grew up like we were in college at the same time in the Cleveland area. So, um, in the, in the old caliber days, uh, so, and, uh, Alex Malieve handed in his joy operations hey. cover, which, uh, Alex has this thing he likes to do where he like just tries to flatten everybody with his variant cover. He, and I love it. It's just, they're beautiful. So that will debut cool. in those. We'll be debuting those very soon. So That's yeah, good to hear. lovely, lovely stuff. I got to tell you, um, and we'll get into it. Uh, uh, Daniel Shabon, our, our editor on all things uh, Jinx World, and he's also uh, edits a lot of the the big books at at um, Dark Horse. But he's he's been killing it. He's just been like delivering gold every day. I'm just so happy with how everything's working out over there. That's awesome, man. Give us the ten cent tour, then. Uh, oh, sure, cool. yeah. Um, all right. So, here, here's, here's what happened. So, when I left Marvel, when I, when, when it was time to go in 2018, I thought I was going to do something at DC because, good lord, you know, it's, you know, why, why not? But I, I actually thought it would be like I did some cool stuff at DC and I would set up a home for Jinx World and it I, I I thought it would be Dark Horse because they had told me they wanted it over the years my you know lifelong friendship with Diana Schutz who used to be executive editor she had told me over the years that there had been times where I was the subject of a meeting and and I had um quite a few um moments over the years with uh, Mike Richardson that were just beyond and delightful. I think I've even told you, like we, we often find ourselves on the same plane, like going back to Portland and sitting next to each other and have the best time. He's so interesting. Have you had him on the show? I have not. And I, I've met him a few times at conventions. I would love to have Mike. The guys. worst thing that could happen to you if he announced his podcast, because Holy crap, does he got the goods anyway? So, <laughs> um, uh, we would have these delightful conversations. And then also over the years, um, Dark Horse was treating all of my closest friends very well. David's got Kabuki over there. Mike Goming has, uh, you know, a big, a victories and quite other things. And then there's Black Hammer. And there's just all these books that I uh, love. And also, um, and it sounds weird. I guess it's like a timing thing. You know, I, I broke into comics. Dark Horse had just become a thing. Like Dark Horse said, like Dark Horse had be, had started publishing before. I'd come in, but Dark Horse had really found itself when I started making comics and all of me yeah. and my friends were at Caliber and were thrilled to be published. I mean, just being published is amazing, sure. but you know, you can imagine how you'd be like, well, I, don't, I wish I was over there. Look at, I got Sin City over there. Yeah. They got aliens and, and the mask and, you know, and just, it just looked like they were doing the same kind of like elevated genre material that we were doing. They were just doing it with our heroes. And, and that was, and so, and then I remember like all red ended up over there and I was like, oh, I wish I was good as all red. And, uh, um, and so, and, and just around the time, I think I might've been dark horse worthy. 
uh, I, I got, I, I, I made it into Marvel and, and, and image and like the, 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 the ships went the other way, but like the, the, the pull at me at dark horse was, was very real. Um, and I know this sounds weird, like in 20 years later, but then literally, um, when, when I was leaving Marvel, I thought that was the call I was going to make, but we had talked to DC first and DC just had laid it out on the table. Dan had, uh, it's, Dan DiDio had said, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We're like there was, there wasn't any, um, uh, uh, like any other choice. I mean, he just made it impossible to say no to. Sure. And, and even like, well, I'm going to go shopping. No, you're you just offering me everything I've ever wanted. So off, off we go to, uh, to DC now. And also, you know, at the same time, I was pining away to be published at Dark Horse to, to, I was actively auditioning for Vertigo books. I was, I, I, I've discussed here years ago on the show, like I, like my first paid gig in comics was auditioning for Hellblazer of which I did not get. And nor should I have, I was not ready yet, but, uh, but I, the first check I ever got with a superhero logo on it was from Karen Berger, Dark Horse's Karen Berger, uh, um, uh, to, to draw three pages of a Garth Ennis Hellblazer script that I screwed up. Um, and, but I was so delighted. Oh my God. I walked into the bank with my check with a Superman logo on it. And I slapped it down. Like they're all going to stop what they're doing and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Does that check have a Superman logo on it? And, um, uh, uh, that did not happen, uh, at, at all, but it did happen to David Mack years later. He brought in, uh, like a check that he had gotten from a combo company and they were all like, wait a minute. Is this the, the, the real Spider-Man? So um I I I I I I so when uh DC offered to publish all of my creator owned stuff with all of my friends as a line of vertigo like titles that I would then own. Of course, I'm I, of course you're gonna say yes to that. And again, I don't mean to sound braggy in any way, shape, or form. I have certainly lost the taste for even the humble brag as I've gotten older, but we're describing a situation. I'm just tell you the good stuff when it's good stuff. And I'll tell you the shitty stuff when it's shitty stuff. But in this, in this, in this regard, um, uh, Dan made, you know, made some promises and he kept every single one of them and, and was just delightful. Well, so, let's look. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I was going to say, let's look back for a second because sure. Zach has a good question. Uh, if Dark Horse tells the publishing rights, any chance we might see your Cavalier and Clay that you couldn't do years back when you were Marvel exclusive? How about that for a reason? Well, that's a good one. And and I no one's brought up Cavalier and Clay. I'm not sure where the rights are with any of that. Uh, uh, and I am actively working with the Shabon, so I'm I'm pretty close to the Cavalier and Clay. If I'm sure I, I'm sure I could ask, but I have not. But but the opportunity to work on some of the other IP that Dark Horse publishes uh, has been brought up to me. And uh, when the dust settles and, and if there's a story that I'm appropriate for, I, I certainly would, would take that very seriously. You know, I, you know, I love the licensed books. I love them. I even love that. Like it, and it also ended up that they ended up with um, me and Alex's halo work that we did at Marvel is now at dark horse. And I'm thrilled because oh, I'm like, oh good. It's, it's, it's here where, where Scarlet's going to be. That's awesome. Would you, uh, and that's good to know about Scarlet because other people were asking about Scarlet. Yeah. Would, you mentioned Karen Berger. Would you do a project with Berger Books? Well, I have my own like imprint. So sure. Sure. If there was, if there was a, uh, I admire her a great deal. Yeah. Like, like, like you also have to remember, like, from my, like, she created Vertigo. She said comics are a serious art form. She, she's someone I've admired my whole life. I don't know her at all, uh, but I've always admired her. But she kind of like, for us, planted a flag and said, "No, you're serious authors. Enjoy." Like even yeah. whether you like, we're all you know. So I've always admired her. So if there was a reason or a, a way that was appropriate for all of us, sure, I would. I would love to. I, I mean, I that was one of my goals: is can I get good enough to impress her? Can I get her to hire me? That 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 would be. That would be the one of the things someone of my age would be like. Well, how do how do you know you've made it? So yeah. let's uh, let's go through the Jinx World sure. list. And everyone, I'll tell you now, 
there's likely going to ha- come where people are going to ask you maybe in 45 minutes, hey, you haven't talked about Jinx World and Dark Horse. What's going on? I know. I, that's okay. No, that's okay. But yeah, let me let me just let me just but, tighten it up. So so when um, DC went through all of their changes and Dan was gone and like their whole business model changed, I was like, oh, okay. All right. What, what, like, well, I got I to gotta figure this out because there was a, a partnership and then my partnership was with Dan. And when when Dan goes, eh, that's that's we're, we're done. And no one was being mean or anything, but it was you know we're we're done. So well, it's it's no different. And I think with less malice, as when there's a regime change at a studio. Totally, and, it's, and, it's you know, exactly the same thing. Yeah, you know. And okay. I've 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 been in both situations. It's fascinating. Um, but um, so it was like, all right, well, hmm, what 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 should we do? What are the goals? What you know, and and. And, and literally around that same time, Dark Horse had just some super kindnesses to some friends of mine behind the scenes, the stuff that hasn't been made public that I was like, uh, like, it always felt like, like, you know, so I, I called them and they said, uh, let's do it. And cool. Here we are. Yeah. So, all right. So you've said Scarlet. So Pearl cover. Uh, yeah. So we're, we're, we're every, everything we're that you had seen before. Um, if we're continuing with it, it's coming to Dark Horse. If we're not, it's coming to Dark Horse. Plus, a lot of new things are coming to Dark Horse. And of, of course, the um, the focus is new stuff and keeping you know the 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 the, mat- the library that we have accumulated um, in tip top form. Now that uh, and my may I say, I, we're all we're all book nerds here. Dark Horse does the best collections. Dark Horse and DC, the best collections, the best. So um, the the book nerd in me was just dying dying to be part of that program. Will we? Uh, well, here is Jimmy. Jimmy is specific. Yeah, I haven't looked at any of the. I haven't looked at any of the questions. Oh, let me just. I'll go go through. Okay, so I see. Yes. So in in uh, in pandemic, we've been working almost constantly to make the books we've been making. Jinx World, almost across the board, is all fully painted books by the same person. So they're not, they're not, they're not built to be produced monthly. Yeah, they're not uh, fast books. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not fast books. They're just not. I, I, I know other people do it fast. Uh, we're just we're, that's we're not. Uh, also, we're in a weird. And I've I posted some of it. You can go look on uh, on Instagram, uh, particularly with Pearl. I'm in the place where Gato, someone I've been working with since college, um, has hit his next level. He has, uh, 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 I don't know, uh, achieved uh, achieved the next level as an artist. And uh, I am just thrilled to be part of it and uh, trying to like stay out of the way, but yet inspire, you know, like it's just an amazing experience. I've had it with a few people before, but uh, I, I like, and I'm not sure what happened. Like, 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 why is it, why, why did, why, why has Pearl inspired this for me? But I'm so deeply moved by it. And, and so, yeah, so you'll be seeing more Pearl coming. And also thank you for making Pearl like a financially successful comic that we can do another run of it. That's great. pretty great. So we're going to get, you're going to get um, Dark Horse versions of the first two trades and a third volume of brand new material coming very soon. Excellent. And that'll be coming after Joy. And the other thing we're doing is not putting them out on top of each other. A mistake that I've made in the past is I'm in my enthusiasm and in my, uh, I don't know how much time we have on this planet. I, I throw out a lot of stuff and, uh, and, and sometimes at the detriment of a project. And so right now we're going to try as much as we can to like give them each their space to breathe. And, uh, uh, all, yeah, so that that's what's coming next. So we're starting with Joy Operations. This means Stephen Byrne, big, big sci-fi hoo-ha. We'll talk about that in a little bit. That okay. starts in November. You can order it right now. Very proud of it. Gorgeous. After that, Pearl, Volume Three, brand new number one. If you haven't read it before, doesn't matter. You drive in, you'll enjoy it. Also exciting, uh, United States of Murder Inc. Our little engine and could. A uh, volume three is completed. It is done in the can. We could release it tomorrow. We're not, but we could. Um, Mike and Taki have finished it. So we're going to be releasing that as well. Beautiful. Uh, Murder Inc. is like, you're not supposed to like pick your favorites, but it's like my favorite. 
And like, I just did like the lettering pass on the sixth issue of the new volume. And I literally was like, why am I not writing this every day? This is like, uh, like, I just, I, I, I hope people try it out because we love it so much. Anyway. Um, and then uh, also uh, David Mack is working on the second volume of cover while we actively work on the pilot to the cover animated show on HBO Max, which is an animated show in David Mack's Artistic Voices. Wow. Um, and, uh, directed by David, produced by Rooster Teeth. They're doing amazing work at Rooster Teeth. We spent a lot of the pandemic just working on the, for people who've read the book, they know it kind of takes place in three different artistic worlds. It, there's the David Mack comic book world, there's the real world comic book world, and then there's the spy world. And all those three, um, in comics, it's very easy to bounce back and forth. Like comic, like something about comic brain, you can just do that. But in uh, visual transitions and in, in TV, can be jarring. So they have to they, to finding like um, the the signature transition that is unique to us that speaks to the voices in front of you. And they, they've been working on it and it's gorgeous. And I know you can see some of the shorts that David's directed on YouTube to see what David Mack's work looks like when you animate it. Uh, this is something really special. And I really do hope uh, it, it, it gets to be seen by, by the public because they really found some new programs and applied it to David's work and it, it really looks beautiful. So that, so that's really interesting. We're, we're really working on the second volume while we're working on the pilot. So fingers crossed on that. It's animation. It takes forever. So is I'll Scarlet, is Scarlet still in development over there or? No, Scarlet was in development. Uh, at first it was at HBO, not at HBO. This is like before the streamers. So yep. uh, believe it or not, HBO and HBO max are like different. Sure. Um, yeah. Are they? I don't know. Um, but, uh, so we were, we were bought, uh, by someone at HBO named Mike Labardo. He greenlit like, uh, Game of Thrones and Veep and Barry. It was like really an wow. honor to be, uh, bought by him. And, uh, afterwards he like moved, when he left HBO, he actually optioned Murder Incorporated. And I was, I was really, um, uh, delighted by that, that, that he, he, he was a fan, but, uh, and that, like, like Scarlet was going to be a, a, a hard sell as a TV show or a media for all the reasons people like the book, it was going to be a hard sell on television, but uh, you know, I'm not going to say like, you know, we're, we're here to try something new. I'm not going to say no. So, sure. uh, but I, but I knew it was a long shot in any day of the week. And then when Portland started burning every day in real life, I, I just, uh, not only did it, it, it lose any kind of like ability to become a tv show i i personally lost like like i i, I like you know like my one of my kids was down at the protest got shot by a pepper bullet you know oh, yeah she came home with a big welt she wasn't doing anything she was just there like observing and 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 got got shot and and uh yeah so i'd like yeah i don't, don't want to write this anymore <laughs> so the good news is with the three volumes we we it's it's a three act big giant story with an ending like so we feel really good about that okay. and in in instead alex and i are working on a, a, a new project that is uh more scary for us like like artistically like like and also if um and for just a little hint if you take a look at alex's um uh, Twitter feed um, when he uh, the new style of painting that he's doing for these silver surfers and stuff is is he's building towards a new style that um, uh, I'm going to dive into for the new stuff. Okay, that's cool. Greg yeah. McKean has a cover question. Sure, and I, I know the answer to this, but is cover at all inspired by Tom King's story? The comics guy going into intelligence and back out into comics. No, he's just proof of concept. No, uh, cover cover uh, predated Tom King. No, cover came out of a couple of real life incidences uh, that happened to both David and I. Believe it or not, uh, most uh, prominently, uh, David. Uh, um, a couple, a few years ago, um, we started getting calls from the State Department uh, uh, if we would be part of like a cultural attaché exchange program, and they basically involved like they flew me and my wife down to Bolivia 
where at the time, again, this was uh, pre-Trump and uh, during the Obama administration, a world very different than the one we live in right now. And uh, on, on, on a few levels, but like I got invited to Bolivia, which is like, you're like, wow, comics got me to Bolivia? Like you wouldn't even, like who even thinks of that, right? And so I got invited to the biggest book fair in South America and, and it was crazy, like crazy. And uh, I believe we talked about it when, when it had happened, but you're like at embassies and you're meeting people with sketchy titles and, and, uh, and really interesting people as well. And it was all really, it, w it went so well. And then they started inviting me to like Russia and Iraq. And I was like, yeah, I'd really like to do that. I also have children. And there's a point where you have to say to yourself, you know, because for the last few years, if the, you would heard Russia is closed, you would not be surprised, right? And there was at a time where you would definitely feel like you could go there and they'd close it. And then I'd be like, Diane Keaton trying to get the fuck out in reds, you know? So, um, um, that's a, the first of 17 reds references that will hit, hit, hit us this evening. It's but, one of your favorites. Absolutely, man. How so come I don't know you, kid, when you talk about a movie that's 40 years old and God forbid, I talk about, I dream a genie or Tom Bosley, my, my spiritual, uh, bear, uh, that I'm slowly morphing into and stuff. I'm the asshole. I interesting. I'm okay. Kidding. So anyway, so um, so so uh, I I I had to decline some of these offers, and then David was getting them too. And David, um, uh, 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 the Bachelor, uh, went and right. to, went to Russia, and went to Peru, and went to like all these really interesting places. And in some of the places, some sketchy stuff went down, and uh, yeah, enough for us to consider doing this yeah. as a way to blow off that tension, like sure. that life tension. And at the same time, maybe by telling a totally fictitious story, get to the truth a little bit, if that makes sense. So uh, um, with a little bit of in-laws and a little bit of uh, <laughs> confessions of a dangerous mind. Yeah, I was just I was telling someone the other day, eventually I'll stop ripping off the in-laws. I don't know when it'll happen. It hasn't happened yet, but eventually one day, I feel like if I say it out loud enough, I'll embarrass myself to stop. <laughs> like uh, eventually, anyway. So the in-laws, diner scene, Peter Falk, doesn't get better. The best written thing ever put down by humans on screen. Oh, the Bay of Pigs, that was my idea. Absolutely. Yeah, well, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. All right. You're really serious about this. I got to worry about this now. I literally have a memory of young little Brian seeing this movie on Showtime or whatever fucking cable this thing I had. And it was one of the first few times where just dialogue was flattening me. It was just, <laughs> what is happening? Who is this person who talks like this? And I just was blown away and never, never came back. I'm with you, man. You know, Mike Greenberg from ESPN uh, we worked together for 10 years in Chicago and that was like one of our bonding things was the, was the in-laws. Absolutely, man. No, you know, Billy and Bing, they would have been uh, the Walter Cronkites of uh, China right now if uh, things had worked out differently. And how frustrating is that they didn't let Albert Brooks write the remake? I'm not sorry. Anyway, yeah, yeah, you know, there's a remake with him and Michael Douglas. Oh, I'm aware. It's so bad. It's all blue or something. It's, it's like so a very blue bad. movie. Oh, it's so bad. It, and it's, it should be great. Yeah, because it should have worked out, but uh, yeah, of course not. And also, it's just some things you can't remake. They're vehicles for those people, and yeah. especially Arkin and Falk, who were so one of a kind. And man, I, I, I'm, I'm worried, especially given that Arkin didn't do season three of uh, the Comiskey Method. And I understand he's getting up there. It's like Hackman. I saw how Hackman uh, poked his head out of the gopher hole. Oh, did he? Uh, because yeah, because it's. Uh, the 50th anniversary of uh, French Connection is coming up. Oh. We did a short written interview recently, but no, oh, an interview, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I'm like, fascinated when 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 they tap out like that. Totally. It, it, yeah, Connery did it, and he should yes. have. But uh, um, it, it's fascinating to me. Uh, I am not Mark. looking at these questions, and I feel bad. Um, <laughs> no, uh, the in-laws was not written by David Mamet, but David Mamet has also ripped off the in-laws. Uh, Norman uh, Norman Steinberg, who also was one of Mel Brooks's guys on Blazing Saddles, and Andrew Bergman, 
Oh, I'm sorry. You're right, man. Shane Andrew Hart. Bergman. Another another Brooks uh, acolyte. So yeah. Uh, yeah, Shane. but you're right about he was on Blazing Saddles writing staff. You're right. You're right about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I just finished the Brooks biography that not a fan wrote, and it was very interesting. And about, and about a, which which Brooks? About Mel Brooks. Oh, and okay. and all of his various uh, collaborations with people going back to the Sid Caesar years all the way through modern day. And one thing that annoyed me was, and as a writer, I wanted to hear your thoughts. Uh, he's like, you know, he's not a uh, put him in front of the typewriter typing kind of writer. He's a pacing writer that says things. Yeah, I'm like, not, they, they do exist. I, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I don't know how yeah. to break it to you, man. That's like 75% of the writers I know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I've long since learned not to uh, critique anyone else's methods. As long as I got their shit done. Uh, like also like, like me and, uh, Matt, uh, fraction are obsessed with, uh, uh, the guy from Deadwood, David Milch, who sure. like writes rolling around on a, you can Google this. This is, this is on YouTube. It's like, he like lies his tummy on a beanbag and just yells shit out for people to type while he's and, and made Deadwood. I couldn't do that. And Larry Charles years. in the bathrobe, Dan Harmon. I mean, there's a mm -hmm. lot of, weird, there's a lot of brilliant weirdos out there. God yeah. bless them all. Absolutely. I'm a I'm a big fan of sit down in your chair and sit here until until you're until you've typed your day's allotment. So, what are you gonna do? Anyway, and 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 and, and if it's not working, go do laundry. Uh, here's a short one. Did you ever consider planning crossover stories with your Jinx World characters with either indie, Marvel, or DC characters? Uh, yes. I you know obviously I've worked in the crossover milieu over the years, so the ideas uh, pop in. And uh, we did um, like Who Killed Mad Men with Powers. And I believe that's being reprinted in the new right. Mad Men uh, a hardcover coming out from cool. Dark Horse. Look, it's all Dark Horse related. And, um, uh, and Powers uh, is um, very heavily featured in Donnie Cates' crossover on sale right now, uh, of which uh, Mike and I may be appearing uh, soon in an upcoming issue. Oh, that's cool. So, I had no idea. That's excellent. Yeah. yeah. Even does Mike. Even does Mike, by the way. So if he's hearing this, it's uh it's news to him as well. But uh <laughs> but uh so but but your overall question in my heart, some of these characters live in the same universe, some of them do not. Uh Jinx has kind of a little universe of, of characters uh that I've um honestly just revisited because um there was uh, some genuine uh, Hollywood interest for Jinx uh, all of a sudden, so that so yeah. I've been back in in her world uh, lately and and quite enjoying it. Uh, 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 so so I'll, I'll I'll let you know, but you know I think more times than not, people come to indie comics or create their own comics. They're 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 looking for uh, I I I get to stick anywhere. Show me show me show me some blood and guts. Show me show me show me your sweat and tears. I'm looking for truth. I'm looking for innovation and and the next level stuff and uh it's fun to have your characters team up it is and particularly if you have a story behind it but i think a lot of these characters live in their own ecosphere and and that's what makes them special i understand yeah um all right so should we talk about joy operations before we move away from dark horse well sure I, I i just the over so the overall just uh just yeah, the I, I, i'm feeling like i i don't finish thoughts on on some of these so i'm just it's, oh, it's overall good. we're going to be at dark horse for uh many years to come we have uh, uh again not to be braggy but we have quite a few years of already greenlit projects ahead of us uh, i say that not again not in bragging but in if you're all into this Oh, good. It's a safe space and we're going to have fun. And, and, uh, and I, and I think like Mike Mignola for creating like, a a, a, a space and lifestyle that I, to aspire to, like, who wouldn't want to just like do that. Right. So, um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll be doing that. So over the next couple of years, you will see a lot of new material and when it's appropriate time-wise and schedule-wise, new versions of things going back from torso powers uh we're putting out like our first collection is actually a reprint of the powers graphic novel that just came out from dc last year even in pandemic and during dc's distribution stuff we still sold out which i was i was genuinely shocked by i couldn't even bring myself to promote it you know um 
And, and I was so, I, I, I was like, it was, it was so lovely. I, I like me and Mike got to share this moment of, oh yeah, we forgot people like powers. It was so sweet. And, uh, um, and so I, I was really grateful for that. So we're putting on a new collection with a brand new cover um, uh, uh, this for this Christmas. So will, will there be someone had asked earlier, you had the oversized collections and stuff. Will it be a volume eight? Is that volume eight? Yeah, we're we're that we're we're not heading to volume eight yet, but we're heading towards that. We're heading towards a unified dark horse library uh, of its own voice, but not unlike what they do with Black Hammer and Hellboy. That is what's been discussed: is it creating okay. like volumes of material like they did, like Sin City, where it's all like very easily orderable and in order. So. Okay. Yeah. Do you do you want to give the elevator pitch specifically for Joy Operation? Hell yes. So, um, so Joy came to me uh, from about like three or four different places, and one of them was that. And I'm not gonna. I will a year from now describe what franchise I'm discussing, but I don't want to do it right now. Okay. Uh, not because I'm being a. a, a I just. I know something about a franchise. I don't, I think if I even say what it is, it's a spoiler. Okay. So I'm just saying, but there's a franchise out there that I thought for sure was going to go in a certain direction. I thought about it for like a year and a half, like almost every day I was just obsessing about, oh, they're going to do that. And then I found out for a fact, they are not doing that. And that I completely made it up. They were never doing that. No one was ever thinking about it. I made up a thing. Cool. So I thought for a while about this thing that I had made up in my head, and I realized that it was something that I wanted. I wanted this thing that I had made up. So um, that, and as I tell my students every semester, that's how you know you've got something. All right. So, um, and then I also um, had a narrative idea, this idea about the narr how to pursue the narrative for the first issue that I hadn't seen before. And when you think of something, you haven't exactly seen it like that before. You go, ooh, hey, do I have something? Because that's hard to do. That's really hard to find something that hasn't been done before because Sorenko did all of it. And then before that, well, Eisner did all of it. And people like <laughs> pretended they didn't. They like to pretend none of that happened and they invented it. Right. So, um, so I went to all my friends and I said in comics, I go, has anyone done this? Like I'm, I'm in no, and, and I'm like, Ooh, I might have something unique. And it's a bummer to even say that because now you're looking for something unique in the book. And what I want obviously is to people to open up the book and just, just be surprised by anything that we will throw your way. But by telling you this is a surprise, I feel like I'm shamalaming myself. And like, there's a twist. Now, then, then you're looking for the twist. There's no, it's not a twist. It's just something I haven't done before. I want, I wanted to try it. At the same time, I'm looking at Stephen's work on Wonder Twins, and then we start working together. On, I, I asked him to come in and do some Legion with me, and I, 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 I may have said it to him at the time that like, like Legion's almost like, um, it's almost like a mean gig. It's almost like at the deep end of the pool. It's like kicking someone into the deep end of the pool and going, all right, swim. let me know how you do. And uh, I, I, but in my heart, I'm like, I love his work so much. Like every time it would show up on Instagram, I would, I would like, like, like feel something, like connect to it. I, there's, and we all know what that feels like. There's just like some artist that just gets you. Right. And I would really like uh, feel that way about his work. And I, I, uh, threw him in the deep end of the pool on Legion half with the thing. Let's see how let's maybe, maybe, maybe we're great together. Maybe that's what I'm feeling. So I, um, I, uh, uh, yeah, I came to him right away and I said, I have this an enormous undertaking. I in, and it's hard because we're, we're, we're kind of strangers. We, we don't know each other. Right. And you're like, hey, you want to make a baby? Uh, it's it's a very strange thing to to say to someone, and it, it's you're literally asking uh, for a lot. And and he was totally in up for it and into it. And we started cooking uh, a, a while ago. And once we had it, we just hit the ground running. And um, there was a couple projects uh, that we were, I, I was working on. And um, when we came to Dark Horse, and I said, "Well, here's what we're here's what we're working on." 
uh, they went, oh, that's the first one. And 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 they were right. There's just something like it looks like a dark horse book. I, I, it's like yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I'm just so happy that it exists. And I'm happy that it's at the right publisher, and I'm deeply happy with the way the collaboration's going. And I I say that because I, I kind of know from experience that if it's going well behind the scenes, you're going to like I I it's exciting to show you the results. Okay. That you, the, you, the reader, are going to enjoy this. I, I've never had it go the other way. So, so again, what can you tell us about the story itself? Oh, I can do that. So, Joy, it's it's a story of a woman named Joy Corrigan, and Joy, and the whole story takes place like fifty five years from now, uh, and with a, a nod to Blade Runner. Uh, everything's fifty five years from now, and uh, <coughs> what we discover is a world where corporations have purchased um, cities. That in uh, that and become their own governing bodies, sure, and uh, become their own design, uh, lifestyle design, uh, uh, uh um, uh, signatures, right? So, if you're in this one city, it feels this certain way. If you go to another city, it feels like a completely different uh, kind of theme park, if you if you were, but not sure. not theme park, people really live there, yeah, and and um. Uh, this is something I do think that's going to happen. And I think it's I, already starting to happen. I think and, you're absolutely um, right about that. Absolutely. Yeah. And with that will come a new kind of society, a new kind of uh, socializing, exactly. a new kind of way we, we uh, police each other and uh, inspire each other. And I, I wanted to explore what I thought all of that could be. Um, so joy is an envoy for a trust and a trust is a corporately owned city for lack of a better word. Uh, and as an envoy, she's kind of like uh, a super cop, like a sheriff, like uh, like uh, someone who works for the person that runs the whole thing. So she's kind of like a cross between the sheriff and John Wick. Like she's like this mixture of, uh, of, of things for a new kind of society with a new kind of policing. And, and so she's there. And by page 10, her whole world has been turned upside down by something that happens inside the book, I'll let you discover that on your own. Uh, but, uh, you know, like Scarlett and Jessica Jones, it's it, the world is the world and we're very, we worked hard on it, but it really is a character study about a character in a very unique position uh, uh, only that only she could be in and, and exploring her character through that uh, is something I really like doing. So if you really liked what was going on in Scarlet or Jessica Jones? I, I do. I really think you'll dig what's going on in Joy Operations with the added bonus of Stephen's perfectly built future worlds that he's been working on the entire pandemic. And also, uh, I'm I'm so happy because it allowed us to leave this world and go to a, a world that we wanted to be in. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to uh, give you all a ticket to that world that we were we were visiting instead of doom scrolling oh good lord you know i was just talking about how erge during world war ii when he was doing tin tin tan tan uh kind of did the same thing like not dealing with the fact that the nazis were occupying the netherlands and or you know belgium or the wherever the hell he wherever the hell he was but uh you know yeah and that he that's that's kind of how he dealt with it and all of a sudden the tan tan stories got very fantasy landish and stuff and it's like that's really interesting you know well i think i think we're i i don't think it's hard to imagine that we're heading into a a a a, a new a new era of a lot of that coming our way yeah. uh, with pandemic i mean we were i mean just from what i could see and some of it's just anecdotal but um either people are writing hardcore apocalyptic the world is burnt to death and there's nothing left kind of fiction or they're going, yeah, I am leaving all of this and going somewhere else. And again, uh, the most famous is Star Wars. Uh, like, like that was absolutely a reflection of, I'm, we don't want to talk about Vietnam right now. Let's do something else. Uh, like, and, and yeah, uh, years and years of Watergate and, yeah, um, and, and Vietnam and other atrocities. And oh, Star Wars, that looks great. And that really was part of why. It was such a unifier. Um, is it, it brought us all together in a, in a, a towards a better world? Agreed. So Agreed. And, I, and so it, we all and we're, and we're all Star Wars babies, 
those of us who make these stories and those of us who buy the stories. So I think it's not hard to imagine we're, we're about to enter a new world. With that, on top of the fact that we're entering, entering into another golden age of creator-owned comics uh, for four or five different reasons, but um, uh, you have almost everyone who can make them trying really hard to make something brand new that they haven't seen before. And boy, if I was just as a, just as a reader, it, well, how exciting that is. Like they're not all going to be Star Wars, but no. some of them are. Sure. Like, that's, that's amazing. You know? Well, what, all, what a great time. All the people that are doing that have, you know, kind of made their bones at the big two and are stepping up. And, and yes, again, isn't it weird that sadly when things are tragic, a lot of for a lot of people, the creative gene just kicks in and it's like, all right, I can't do it the old way. Let me try and do it a new way. And that's why it's really interesting from panel syndicate to Substack to all these other platforms and these creators going, all right, maybe I got to make my own stuff because the people that were signing my checks are telling me pencils down for the next couple of months. Well, it's, and it's that's one version, but it's not even that. There's there's a whole generation. And we go talk about I've been actually dying to talk to you about this because you've had some uh, people on your show with some uh, uh, some takes that I I, had, I, I, I I differed from. Please. Um, but but it we're we're in a very interesting time right now because the 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 market decidedly split into three. Now it's all one big market for sure, and and, and we're all comic book buyers, and it's all comics, and it's all great. But it's it used to be mainstream comics and indie comics, and yep. there was mainstream comics, there's anything with a cape, and indie comics is everything else, no yep. matter how commercial the genre is i was like like for most of my uh career i was working in crime fiction and i would say in interviews even on the show i but only in comics is crime considered like in like indie edgy indie like in 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 on television that's 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 nine o'clock on a cbs any night right? of the week, absolutely so it's 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 weird that only one genre is considered mainstream while everything else is considered in, indie um, so, but now we find ourselves over the last course, really the last 10 years, but substant right now, we got three different markets. We have the Marvel and DC mainstream market. We have, and I wouldn't even call it the creator owned or independent market, but the other market of comics, the, the, the comics are the image, Dark Horse, IDW, it's its own market. It's serving its own constituents. Some of which it's, again, there's a Venn diagram of crossover. For sure, sure, there always will be. But sure. there, are, there are these these marketplaces are aiming towards a different kind of um, uh, audience. And then there's the bookstore market that has exploded. All right, and this is the Reign of Tellingers, Dogman, Captain Underpants, Miles Morales, uh, all of these things. And, and again, I, I was startled to find myself in that space. Like that wasn't like I wasn't aiming that. But that when the Venn diagram touches the all the ya stuff goes goes to there and when you go into barnes and noble there 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 they all are this ya wall of graphic novels unlike anything comics has ever seen before you're right and 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 every time i see it i go wow what will comics be like in 10 years from now or 20 years? what will the comics be like for the people who are reading these books oh i'm so excited so anyway, so that's the, that's that's where we are right now. It's happened in my lifetime. It's it's goddamn fascinating. I have a toe in each one of the markets right now, so I know for fact how different they are. How yeah. like very very different they are, and it's, it's it's so and and I and every day I just get excited for the readers because like I, mine's only like one little tiny part of this massive new change that's going on all around comics. I like it, and I. I'm not talking too much. I'm talking too much. No, nah. okay, dude. Yeah, I'm here every week. Yeah, I'm okay. here. Every, I'm here every day. You're the guest. It's no, no, All no. Right. And this is and truly, I, I want to hear this stuff. And again, as you know, how the pandemic has changed things has fascinated me. And also, as you say, these these other out branches of comics and stuff, and where everything is going. And truly, yes, what will today's books inspire? 10 and 20 years from now. I mean, that's why we're balloon 16 years, but certainly as a, a, your generation brought me back to comics that's in 1998, 99. It's the truth. 
and Brubaker, Rucka, you, Joe, uh, all these people, and and Gail, and and others, and it's like wow. And now we're twenty years later, and you guys are the vets. And again, all these so other new weird. People. And it's also so the weird. One, I have to wine. remind myself how old I am all the time. Well, oh, please, good lord! Uh, you know, as you know, I got a couple years on you. As sadly, what are you going to do? But anyway, uh, but it's all right because honestly, that doesn't mean it's over. I mean, I'm still engaged. God, Calvin Reed at uh, Publishers Weekly has like ten years on me, or or possibly more, and is as just as engaged as what's going on as we are. So. Yeah. It's all relative, man. I, you know, my great regret was always never asking Wolfman and guys like Len Wein. Wolfman is still with us. Oh yeah, but, he's in it. And, yeah. and I've, I have asked Marv, I think, on the on the side where I'm like, do you still read? Like, what comics do you read? Do you still read for pleasure in any way? And I wish I had asked that of Len when Len was still around because, yeah, I mean, I, I am curious about those guys. From my understanding, I get everyone's different. And like, I saw Jerry Conway, like, uh, like, um, kind of subtweeting some critique on some people the other day. So he was reading a big pile of con. I love Jerry so much. I, I believe, I believe he was referring to me in one of his, uh, subtweets about like, uh, I, he said, he said somebody was using crack a boom too much in their, in their sound effects. I'm like, <laughs> that, that might be me. <laughs> that is hilarious. That is, you know, I, I forgive. I, I, did, I almost, I almost texted him. You know, I know we're not like friends, but we're close enough. You could, you could hit me with it. You could tell me privately. <laughs> I'll I, take I, it. You know, honestly, and forgive me, everybody, because I, I'm really, I want to know after the fact. I put Jerry and Brian together last year for Baltimore to have that conversation. That was a great conversation. I want to know. Yeah, what did you have? Did you? I know, I know, Jerry had fun. But I no, hope that I, mean that that's that's my only stress comes from. Is Jerry into this at all? Like, 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 I know I'm into, I'm all in. Like, of course, like, he, how exciting for me to talk to, if only he did Justice League 200, I'm, I'm in heaven, right? <laughs> but, and also it was, Jerry's one of the people that, you know, you, you grow up and you meet your heroes and some of them suck and some of them don't. And uh, um, some of them we have publicly, you guys know suck. And some of them privately, we, we still know suck. And uh, um uh, Jerry is uh, not one of those people. Jerry is Jerry is a, a genuine hero, someone I've grown to admire more as I've gotten older. Totally uh, agree. And, and how he's how he is uh, maneuvered and outmaneuvered everything that comes has thrown his way. And I feel the same way about Marv Wolfman. So yeah, so I, I I deeply appreciated you setting me up with that conversation because once you go through like a like an experience like that, you realize. Oh, there's only a few people that really experienced all of this weird shit that I just experienced. Jerry is absolutely one of them. Yep. And uh, you kind of like want to meet those other people, right? Like, like uh, who, who else did this? What did you take away from it? You know? Absolutely. No, dude, I hear you. And, and that was my intent. And that's why I was really glad. And that's really what I was trying to do with these online shows that we were doing for the last year is have interesting conversations rather than six heads in a Zoom that mm -hmm. that I think we're all sick of, frankly. So I'd rather. I'm, I'm not. I'm I'm. I'm Are immensely, you still? I'm immensely grateful for them, and I and I, I I often thought the the way that you did, the way that Jim McLaughlin did. I think a lot of much needed um, archiving was done in the for the comics community during the pandemic. Like a lot of yeah. like like would would that conversation have happened without us stopping our lives to have it right so uh, hundreds of conversations happened uh, that needed to be recorded and had forever and ever like all these conventions that we've done they they get they get lost in the wind some of them are recorded but most of them weren't most of my my best moments at a convention were things we shared but are are gone i do wish they were recorded i do wish they were out there um like someone like uh um tweeted me like three days ago you and jeff john should do a panel together and i was like we did a panel together and we it, and we burned the place down it was a good like like we haven't done a panel since because that panel went so great right <laughs> so but it was 2005 how, how long yeah yeah so you know no you're right and i remember and and uh and i still have it and i don't think i've re-released it but it was you jenkins brubaker Rucka, there might have been a fifth person, but I know you four were there, and it was in Chicago, and it was very funny, 
and it was really great and it was just great getting all of your opinions of like you know yeah what's going on so i hear you and that's and then certainly in a live setting yeah i don't know i guess i'm i guess i'm like hypercritical because i'm worried that like all right no you did a good thing i i'm well, gonna stop i'm just gonna stop you right there you're gonna look like two years from now you're gonna look back and be so happy you have this archive of stuff oh. and we're, we're gonna laugh how pandemic -y it is uh like you're gonna like like why are you wearing a mask on youtube but uh, um, but uh, um, I, I genuinely think that there, as as a teacher of comics and comics writing, there are holes of material missing because people were so busy making comics they didn't write the book about it, right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. No, and Zach's right. Uh, the thing you did with Mark at uh, C2E2 was great. Uh, the same with the Miller one and the one with you and Jurgens. Yeah, no, Zach, no. I I deeply appreciate that because as as John knows, I I uh, um, almost only say yes to stuff like that. That like when someone comes at me with, oh yeah, I I I, I better show up to that one, or 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 I I just I'm so honored to be included in who's who's asking. But like I like I spend almost all my time my free time or, or unpacking time or whatever, look at watching conversations like that with other people. So I, I have to think of like, if someone likes my work, then I should make sure that material is out there for that. And, and particularly with Mark, our, our relationship is so weird and unique and, and non-existent that coming together, having shared this unique moment in pop culture, uh, uh, self-promoting history that I, that I, uh, um, yeah, that, that I, I love yeah. that we're able to get together and not understand how we're connected and go away from each other again. All right. So, and here, Radium uh, kind of gives me the opening. If sure. We talk about DC for a sec. Given sure. the DC deal was organized by Didio, what are your long term plans with DC? And I agree with him loving the Checkmate Mini. And we'll get into the individual books. But yeah, where do things stand with you? Thank you. Well, I'm still at DC. I, I'm, I'm, I, so it's a different deal. I'm still at DC. Um, Love the people, love the characters. Everything I said about coming to DC, I really meant. I I couldn't wait. I'm so excited, and they have been uh, great to work with as far as just letting us try new things and 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 letting me play with the the toys I've wanted to play with. Um, so um, I, I continue on Justice League for for the foreseeable future, including okay. uh, the just announced uh, Justice League versus Legion of Superheroes, which is our return to the Legion of Superheroes, which is a really big deal for me. Um, uh, and um, on top of that, we have Checkmate coming out. And then, um, <clears throat> which is, I, yeah, I, I, for the issue that came out this week, now people can see that every issue, Alex did something very unique in a set piece, like a visual unique set piece he's never done before. Uh, so happy, I'm so happy about this. Also. I love Checkmate. I love Greg. I love like everything about it, it. It was something I really wanted to get to. Yeah. Um, and and I'm thrilled it came out because it 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 almost it almost got um, sucked under the 5G bus. Like That's it was, what I was, it was originally. Uh, and uh, for people, I, and again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll send you over to James Tinian's Substack where he's unpacking a publishing plan at DC that never happened but was going to happen we were all hands on deck on this idea of a next generation uh dc idea um uh uh it, it could have worked it should have worked it might have worked um but it but it, uh, but dan was uh let go before it the trigger was pulled yeah and, and and all the plans went away um but beforehand so in but what was weird was um, everybody was kind of like, um, a few of us were, were given a, a, a pillar or like a lane, right? Like, like, um, and, and again, James had a lane and Lemire had a lane and I had a lane and I think Scott had a lane. I, I, I don't want to talk too much out of school, other people's stuff, but I had a lane and, and I, I had chosen my lane, my checkmate Leviathan super spy street lane that would, that would, that would, that would funnel through. So uh, the event Leviathan was all set up to this large lane that was checkmate. And then all of it was going away. And also I was out of the gate first. I was, um, 
I was set up to go for, like I was like other things were going to launch later, but I was already pregnant. So sure was I that this was all going to happen. <laughs> so then checkmate was headed towards that goal. And then that goal was gone. Like where we were like, it's like you're headed toward the Death Star and there's no Death Star, right? There's like, sure. we're, we're just out, well, there's nothing here, right? So um, I was so grateful and it doesn't always happen that we were able to, um, in the, with the new administration, with Marie Javins, like look at the material going, this is really gorgeous. What can we do with it? And I'm like, well, if I'm on Justice League, I, I can, I can, I can, I can land this plane, right? I can, right. I can bring these pieces together because it's all about Oliver. It's all about Oliver Queen. It's all there. And also Oliver doesn't have a monthly book. So I'm kind of like, you guys told me I'm like, I'm, I'm in charge of him right now. Great. That, 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 that's a phenomenal uh, bit of story anchor for, for both titles and fun glue to connect them if you want to have them connected. So I, I was just happy that it got, it, it got to come out because at, at one point I thought, oh no, it's not coming out. I'm going to have one of those weird DC things that never came out because there's a history with that too, right? Sure. You know, like, like, where's the seventh issue of Sonic Disruptors? I don't know. I still want it. So um, a joke is for four people, but they loved it. Anyway, so um, so I, yeah, so I am I am uh, I'm so happy that came out, and also yeah. uh, uh, Naomi uh, season two, uh, which is um, probably as far as DC is concerned, the uh, the the crown jewel of of everything I'm talking about. Wow. Um, which is, um, uh, uh, I'm happy to report Jamal is um, actively painting as we speak. I would show you a cover today, but I've been told not to. Um, uh, uh, and um, we have the unique experience of having the TV show uh, in production as we're producing uh, our version of the material. They're producing their version of the material. I'm consulting on it. I have seen the pilot. It is absolutely gorgeous. Great. Cannot wait for you guys to see it. Um, she is an enormous star. The uh, um, uh, the woman playing Naomi. She's she's gonna she's you know like sometimes like you see a pilot and the the, the person it's like basically unknown, but you're like they look like they've been on TV their whole lives. Like they belong on TV. There's just something about them. Like Ted Danson has that. Like 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 yeah. So she she absolutely has it. Like like Jennifer Garner on Alias. Like she should like. A, have you not been on TV my whole life? No, this is your first show. Like that's, that's how she comes off to me. in, in the night. Cool. So that's great to hear. That. But a unique experience behind the scenes of David and I and Jamal building our mythology and they're building their mythology, sharing it with each other. And I'm curious to see how that all works out. It's been really interesting so far. Okay. That's interesting. Cause I was wondering if you were wrapping up, DC stuff and and you know um, and maybe some of it is wrapping up. Obviously, well, this is this. Uh, these are the things on my plate right now, and I'm doing them. Uh, there's other things that have been offered. I I I think I'm leaning towards create around in the future, but I'm not closing. Like, there's no reason just to say never again. Like, I'm not. Okay. I'm, not, I'm, not I'm not. I'm not there at all. Uh, with DC with Marvel, I'm a little bit there, but uh, okay. But, I was going to be in the next but, question. But, uh, Okay. But with, with um, yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see how everybody goes. Sure, sure. Um, was fine, Jimmy. Was Batman offered the monthly Batman? I'm assuming. Uh, like when I first got to DC, but not yeah. since. I also made it very clear I did not want to do Batman monthly. I said it like a, I said it publicly. I said it privately. Uh, and also you I've been Batman. literally writing Batman since I walked in the door. Like it's really weird. Like I know I'm not writing the Batman monthly, but I write oh. Batman every day. Right between check like Batman, like uh, Event Justice Leviathan, yeah. Batman Universe, Action Comics, and Justice League. Yeah. Batman's in everything, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and I try to keep to that Batman Universe tone that I brought to Batman, like that the, the a, li a little little more detective, lighthearted, less horror uh, element. Um, but you know, it's funny. The same thing happened to me at uh, at. Um, and Marvel, where people go, when are you going to write Iron Man? I go, I write Iron Man every day. Like, Iron Man's in every book I write. So it was funny that that was something that someone requested me, where to me, it feels like I'm writing like an ongoing Iron Man story. I'm hip. 
No, I understand. Um, all right, Magic K has been asking this forever. Sure. Will Wally West join your Justice League? Yes. Okay. Or or no, no, I should word that differently. Whatever works within the continuity of what's going on in uh, the Flash book will be reflected appropriately in the Justice League book. Okay, very good. There cool. are some things going on in all of the books that I'm connected to, from Batman to Wonder Woman to like, all of them are in a very exciting story flux. All of that will be reflected in Justice League, including the return of Wonder Woman. People have already seen a hint of uh, with uh, Sanford Green coming to join me on a Justice League annual that's absolutely gorgeous. Holy Lord, I can't wait to see this. I can't believe it. Like every, like every couple of nights, he like texts me a page. I'm like, God damn. Yeah, you know, it's just beautiful. Anyway, so yeah, um, I love Sanford. Yeah. I, I described to, to DC that what I learned from my time on Avengers and other team books, but per, per, particularly Avengers, which is functions to the company similarly to how Justice League functions to DC where here's where the heroes gather and kind of unpack their stuff. So it should be that what, what's going on in the solo titles is the primary story concern. And then they come together to go, oh my God, I just got, got back to life. Oh my God, I just married Black Adam. Like that should, that, 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 and that's the best stuff that happened in my Avengers run is Iron Man showing up and going, oh, extremists, what the fuck? You know, that, that, that's, that's really what the book does is here's a place that they can all commiserate with each other and share the experience together. And that's um, sometimes hard to pull off in a shared universe. Um, but with a team like this, it's, it's perfect. You have people who've known each other their whole careers, people that barely know each other at all, people that are suspect of each other, and they can really get to share because of all of those things. It's a cool cross section. And, uh, uh, Jimmy said, yeah, Hippolyta deserves a bigger spotlight. I love that you're using Hippolyta in the Justice League, just like I liked it 15 years ago when uh, Jeff Johns and everybody was using Hippolyta in JSA. And I think it's like, no. Yeah, that, and this was offered to me. I I, I wish I, I could take credit for it. The, uh, you know, people, some, sometimes people just pitch stuff to you and you go, no, or hmm. And uh, this, this one made me, pause i'm oh that yeah hmm, hmm I, I i'm not sure i know what that is and then when the uh other uh suggestion that was brought my way was black adam obviously it's something they they were interested in and also knew i have a kind of a soft spot for uh uh recuperating villains like i, I kind of like to see like can i do that like it's hard to do like that the, my whole dr doom run uh at, at marvel was how here's the character that dug the biggest hole can they dig out like it just narratively can you dig them out of this hole yeah. and it seems sincere uh, uh so black adam uh seemed like a whole different pile of uh storytelling uh problems for for that and i i was like ooh. also i also knew oh people are gonna know they, they also already knew about the rock so it so it felt like i i, I doubly had to sell it narratively can't him just be standing there going i'm a movie star now like it's it's uh <laughs> it, it really has to earn his place there so yeah. i thought i thought long and hard like so him and the queen together with their history was quite an interesting uh uh, uh, um, uh connection and also what superman's been going through both in my run and in phillips run um kind of made it where him challenging black adam publicly after he challenged himself so publicly seemed to be like a different dynamic than they had before. And I was, I was excited to try that out. I also love how you're expanding uh, DC cosmic in justice league. And I really loved uh, well, I guess we're not done yet with uh, the unity uh, group. Yeah, we're not done yet. Yeah, we're and, done. and yeah, it's kind of halfway or what, or whatever. I don't know how long your story is, but um, I do love, like, I mean, really uh, the solution of, of, uh, putting uh, the, the initial villain in the Phantom Zone and Superman's regret about it too, I thought was really cool. But just seeing again, what you started building in Superman with again, DC Cosmic and where Superman's place is in there and also just a chance to explore these other races. And it's great to see a Dominator as part of uh, the Unity and, and the Thanagarian, who I initially thought was obviously 
uh, Kadar Hole, and it's like, no, it's yep. another, it's another Thanagarian cop, and that's good because we also need that, that 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 character's name Hawk Slayer, uh, named after Hawk the Slayer, my brother's favorite movie. Hilarious. My brother, awesome. my brother, uh, a very accomplished uh, erudite man uh, uh, and uh, educator, has spent an enormous amount of his private time looking for copies of Hawk the Slayer on VHS. Uh, it, 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 I will never understand it. I love him. And as soon as I was like, oh, I have to name a Hawk character. Hmm. I was like, oh, well. That's you know, awesome, may, man. May my brother finally hear how much I love and respect him. All right, I like Michael Blacklist's uh, question. Is Jonathan Kent's current direction where you always were heading with uh, in Superman Action and Legion? I like the current books. Your run was my favorite in a while. Thank you. I know that uh, John's journey has been, it was the most controversial thing I've done at, at, at uh, DC. And um, I can only word to those, I'm sure none of the people who are mad at me will listen to this, but um, it's, it's never, I'm not never looking to piss you off or uh, like, or, or be be controversial, but at the same time, these characters can't just stand there and do the same thing over and over and over again. Um, so you're looking for new things and new ways and uh, new crises, and particularly for the Kent family, these the, these things have to be big and bold, or they really don't matter because their power sets are so huge and their life experience is so huge. So John's journey has to be equally huge and enormous and separate from his father's. And that's what I was excited about is that John is probably a kid who's looking at his dad going, well, why, why is my life going to be different? Like what, what's going to happen to me that's going to make me, and then it happens. All right. And I think we've all, uh, some of us have, have experienced that. Like, I wonder, I wonder what's going to make, you know, what's going to put hair on my chest. And then you're like, oh man, I wish that didn't happen, <laughs> but it did. So Anyway, so I, I was excited about, about this opportunity. I'm, um, I, I, I will say I'm thrilled with where John has gone. It's not entirely where I was going, though I wasn't going any further than I went. Like I actually stayed on the Superman books, like I think four and a half issues longer than my original, initial run. There were supposed to be 25 and 25 and I was out. And then because of pandemic and then the change of guards and all of that. And I, and I, I always, and even on the Marvel stuff, I'd always go over one or two. I'm like, Oh wait, I one more thing. And, uh, um, and, and so I got, I, I think I got to 28 on, on both of them, on both of them or 27 and 28 on both of them. So that was, that was the end of it, setting it up for John then to come to Legion and see where it went. Right with with uh, I'm I'm open. I did not expect John and Saturn Girl to en end up together, but that they would be certainly emotionally close. Right, the uh, but I I didn't think that that would be a, a thing that landed, um, like a, a big great romance. So uh, I'm thrilled with where it's going. I'm thrilled they didn't put the genie back in the bottle on any of the stuff we did with the, the Kent family. Uh, they may eventually, who knows? I don't know. But, but, uh, but like, like Daredevil, I, there's, you know, I was thrilled. They never, they, it took them like 15 years to put that toothpaste back in the tube. And they really explored it for a very long time from different voices and different perspectives. And that's kind of what I wanted too. It's like, yeah, let's, let's take this for a ride. And if, and if one day it, it's got to be a Clark Kent's got to be a secret again, that, that's okay. But in this world we're living in right now, it doesn't seem that it has to be. And we can explore that and, and see what kind of stories we get out of it. And it's never about messing up the character or destroying the character. It's about, well, let's really look at these, these elements and the world that we're living in right now and what secrets mean, what I, secret identities mean to this world and what Superman means to this world and what truth means to this world. That, that's really what we were trying to write about. Okay. Joshua has a good Spider-Man question. Are you involved at all with making Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse 2, Spider-Man No Way Home, and the upcoming Spider-Man 2 video game? Uh, no to, um, anything, no way home. I am, I remain deeply, 
um, uh, moved by Tom Holland's constant references to Ultimate Spider-Man uh, publicly. I, I, it, my kids have seen them. Uh, like, you know, like one of my daughters came up to me and goes, he's holding your book. I'm like, eh, eh, that's what I, I do appreciate that. Um, uh, but no, and I, it, it bums me out a little bit. Uh, there was, there was um, at, at one point, I was going to be more involved in those Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Kevin had, had called to, to say, wow. hey, we're, 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 we're heavy into your stuff. You're going to need to be more than consulting on this. And I was excited about it. And then the, the, um, what was going on behind the scenes between the companies with some of which is public, some of which isn't uh, made it where that wasn't going to happen. So, um, which is a bummer because it, again, it wasn't about me, but, it, but it affected me. Happened sure. to all of us. Sure. It's happened to you, right? We, you oh know. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Plans um, change. Yeah. But, but I am, I don't need to be involved. I'm happy that our work has inspired good work from them. I like those movies a great deal. Uh, so, 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 and that's how I feel. I feel double, not doubly, but I, I'm over the moon about the video games, the, the, the Miles game and the people that made it and the, and the tone of which they made it and the constant Valentine that it is to me personally. For, I, I've done no work on it yet. Constant from all my social media is, 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 screenshots and 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 uh and and um what the, they have a photo mode on that thing where people are just taking pictures of their stuff all the time and sending it to us and it is just a gift that never stops and this is already on top of the spider-verse gift that never stops right so i do i am on on uh the consulting payroll for spider-verse 2 uh and and um uh, and in contact with lord and miller it is a thousand percent their movie I'm not the writer of it. I am here at their discretion uh, and I, I will remain eternally grateful for their um, generosity towards me and my family and how they treated me around that, the, uh, particularly around that first movie. As I've described here, you know, it's so funny when um, my name was in the credits as the executive producer on Spider-Verse, I did not know that was happening. That was a gift that was given to me by uh, Lord and Miller and the other producers. Um, uh, and it was happening at a time where my life was in a bit of chaos around. Mar I was leaving Marvel and I wasn't, you know, it was time to go. And with that comes a lot of, you know, stress and chaos. Yet there's this movie coming out, right? So, and so it was all weird and they were trying to express themselves to me. And, and I, I, it took me a while to get there to see what they had done and what they had done was one of the nicest things that anyone's ever done uh, for me or any anything I've ever been involved in. And so for forever and ever, I have this movie with my name on it that, you know, I, I doesn't deserve to be. And I'm, I'm so, 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 so honored to be part and of it. And that was so cool for the Globes and, and the Oscars. Uh, I was I was still in the hospital when the, when the when the Globes was happening. And I'm like, look at that. That's awesome. So and, and, and not to get modeling again, but you remember I was just out of the hospital. Yeah, yeah I know. So that was all stuff I might have missed. So it was like doubly, if not triply, exciting. Absolutely. Um, and uh, you know, all right, David, uh, let's build on uh, this because I, I'm talking. so sorry. It's hard to talk with coherent sentences and read things that are popping up. So I'm not looking at them right right away. So hit me with the good ones, and and I, I don't want to miss oh, yeah. anything. Oh no, buddy, I am. I mean, okay. so like David asks, uh, when yes. you say that the door is closed on Marvel, can you explain? Um, I'm not going to say it's closed, closed, but it's closed right now. I, I just, I'm, I, I don't see myself. First of all, I, I just, I just have to remind myself that no matter how big that pull is, that it, the mountain is climbed. I did, I climbed it. Yeah. I climbed that mountain, and there, there are other mountains to climb. There are other. Joy operations is scary to it's scary to put out new stuff. That's awesome. It would not be scary to write another issue of Spider-Man. Right. It would be it would be scary in that. Well, I hope it doesn't suck and compare to my other ones. But like I, I did 18 years on Spider-Man. You've I've got to say to myself that and so and so I I um Marvel, you know, CB and I go back way, way back. CB was an editor of Powers before he, he worked at 
at Marvel. We, I've, I've known him longer. I've known my wife and David Mack even. And um, so the uh, when the conversation came up for me to come back, particularly for Miles' 10th anniversary, but it just, it, it, it just felt, no, it just felt wrong. Also, I'm, I'm hoping they, the, again, this isn't CB or anyone who works in publishing, but there are people above that that need to treat the creators better than they're treating the creators. All right. And I'm talking okay. about there's creators like me, and there's also creators that don't have a platform in which to express themselves or a cushion of another career to then I can now speak. Uh, they, 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 the, the, the articles that you're reading in the paper are correct, if not maybe even a little worse in my opinion. Uh, and I'm frustrated by it. It is uh, not the Marvel I grew up with um, and, and they, they could do better and it wouldn't cost them a damn thing. They need to do better in two places. They need to do way better in credit in, in, in giving the creators the credit they deserve. It is very strange to see Jack Kirby's name behind the caterers when he came up with everything on some of these things. I know, I know his, I know sometimes his name is a little bigger in the font, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and, and I'm, it's a little front more, again, this is, this is privilege. I'm going to say it right now, but it, it comes from the fact that I'm a member of the writer's guild. So I know what my rights are as a member of the writer's guild, but they only, they only come into play if I do it through the, the, the movie part of the thing. But if I do it through publishing, it doesn't, which is fine. I understand. But now that it all goes into the same place, it, and back then, back in 2005, it was two different plot pots. Yep. Yep. But now it all gets gone. It's all going to Disney Plus. It all goes to the yeah. service, right? Yeah. And if it's all going to the service, then I think that the same rights and regulations and, and privileges should should apply for anybody for whatever they did. And that's kind of what Ed's been talking about and um, Coates and other people. And uh, and they can do it. They can. I, hear I know that. I no, got to make it very clear. I want to be very clear. I'm very, very happy with the work that I did there. I'm very proud of the people that I did the work with. I want you to read it, watch it, enjoy it, love it all. Separately, they could do better. I understand, man. And no, a sea change is coming. And I'm glad that the people have spoken up to point out uh, the unbalance that that there is on, on both sides. Because you're right. It is all going to the same place. That's a good thing. But the people responsible for the ideas should be probably yeah, that's all. absolutely it's yeah. that simple absolutely man 100 yeah, percent. and i and i i stand with ed brubaker i stand with my other friends and uh and i i support them wholeheartedly and uh yeah yeah i i again you know listen this is this has been going on since superman it, it's 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 part of the woodwork of of comics i i i wrestle with why um like 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 why why we we knew this going in and we 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 all and we all dove in anyhow because this it's the greatest show on earth right yeah um but but for a while there things were at a more elevated place and then they and they they seem to have gone into a a different place and that and i i i think also i think that they should be looking Long term, and long term is all of these creators are bringing their ideas directly <laughs> to the streaming services instead of uh, through the publisher, and I and and I think that's part of what's um, behind this celebration of creator own this this rejuvenation of creator own that we're in right now. Ah, okay, yeah. No, I understand. Um, Again, I, 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 any kind of whining coming out of me sounds really bullshitty. So I got to make sure I, I'm just, you just ask me a question. That's the answer. I'm with you, buddy. Yeah. Um, oh, that's funny. I, I'm looking forward to here. Uh, what? 
Zach says, I'm looking forward to the return of No Life in your sub stack. Can you give us a live version? Yeah, we're going to get to that, man. Right now. Let's do it right now. Only murders in the building. Let's talk about this for the next two hours. Sure. This show is so good. And, and to the point where at, at one point, like the third episode, I thought Hulu had invented some kind of algorithm show where it's a show that just drops things that you like into the show. Like when Sting showed up, you're like, all right, what's go like what's happening that now Sting's on the show? And then, then Tina Fey showed up and you're like, okay, is this just things I like? <laughs> Yeah, like, like if my wife watches this, Doctor Who shows up. Like, is 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 that is it that kind of? Is it, <laughs> has the, has the algorithm gotten that good? <laughs> that that's how much I love this show. When when Tina Fey, the last line was from her going, "Let me tell you about Squarespace." I lost my mind <laughs> because, again, as a podcaster for sixteen years, the way the way they treat podcasts is appropriately prime for parody, and and they've done it in the best way, and also. It's such a relief that it is as good as it is. And really, I feel like, again, I'm kind of an asshole. I'm a comedy nerd. And it's like, all right, Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez. But thank God. Oh, she's no, no, yeah. See. She's great in it. And it's so cool. Also, go ahead. Some parents will tell you, like, I've been a parent for 20 years. So I've seen way more Selena Gomez on film than you think someone my age would have, sure. right? Sure. Being a parent. And Absolutely. if you watch these shows, it is very apparent that she and uh, 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 Hannah Montana and uh, yeah. iCarly were uh, far ahead of the material. Good. Like their, their talent, good. like, like you, like you, you've seen that on other shows where you're like, you know, yeah. like Leonardo DiCaprio on Growing Pains. You're like, well, clearly this is way <laughs> beneath you. And, uh, um, and, and she, she, she had it, but it, what's great about the show is it's, uh, Steve Martin is one of my heroes as a writer. Like I, I, I like a lot of people just know him from comedies, but if you really read his writing and if you get a chance to read his play about Picasso, he's yep. one of my writing heroes. Read his book, uh, Born Standing Up. It is yes. amazing. Just, it, it moved me like like nothing else i i think about it all the time it's it's a perfect biography and uh, and and just so people know what it is it's a biography about everything that happened to him until the day he got famous and nothing made sense anymore he understood everything until the jerk came out so he said so i'm going to stop writing because now i don't understand any of it and i was like god damn it's such an honest answer right Yes. Uh, so it's and all his about his creative journey, his creative, his creative journey, journey uh, yeah. and and that that weird uh, feeling of telling a joke one week to ten people and it no one laughs, and then a year later it tells the same joke to a stadium full of people to howls of laughter and trying to figure out well why didn't anyone laugh a year ago and there, anyway so Steve Steve's one of my heroes and then every ten years he pulls something like this out of his ass something you never thought was in him. You never, you didn't even think you wanted it, and it's perfect and it's beautiful. He did it with Shop Girl. He did it with uh, um, LA Story. It, yeah, L LA Story. That's an that's another one. And so in yeah. this one, yeah. it's it's here he is uh, in, in in his in his golden years with his best friend, who's also a, a peculiar genius. Yes, sir. Love and, but, and yeah. he. See, and, I, and as a as a fellow collaborator, I know what he did here. He sees his friend. You know, you know what? I know everyone thinks Martin Short's funny when he goes blah, but he's really funny when he mutters shit under his breath, right? <laughs> so he wrote the Martin Short muttering shit under his breath character, right? Gave him this perfect platform to be this brilliant self, right? And and then on top of it all, if you really think about it, it's oh hello the TV show. Remember Oh Hello yeah. on Broadway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick I Kroll wanted, and, uh, yeah. If 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 I was okay. in charge of show business, Nick Kroll and John Mulaney would be on their eighth season of that TV show, right? <laughs> so instead we get this, which is as close as we're going to get to Oh Hello, but it's like really them. And Selena Gomez instead of Chevy Chase, which I think is always the right answer. I would agree. And uh, <laughs> I love to, man, you know, Martin Short, Tons of clever lines, tons of clever moments. 
But for me, in the last episode, when they were at the wake, and he's just learning, leaning over, and he falls over. And it's just like, it reminded me when he was on Arrested Development, and he was the uncle with no hips, and he had to ride side saddle. And just at one point, he just, his legs fly up, and he falls off the horse. And it's like, that is so awesome. And it's such a physical comedy, pratfall, basic comedy. And it's like, that is Martin Short. He can do it all. And I love him. And I love... Again, it's you're so, right. Everything it's so funny right. that you said that because I rewound that moment because I feel he often does stuff on camera that he's just doing. Maybe. Probably. They're all great actors, <laughs> but there's often they all do a double take on him. Like he said something and they all go <laughs> like that. And she 100% jumped out of her seat when he fell down. Like, oh my God, an old man fell. Like, she like if she's that good an actress, God bless. But it looks like he did it, and she didn't. He she didn't know he was going that way. Also, Nathan Lane. Uh, I'm a huge Nathan Lane fan. I've seen him on Broadway do Mammoth. I've seen him at the height of his game. And there's a couple of scenes in this show where Nathan Lane and Mark Short, two of the biggest over actors in the history of cinema, are there face to face, and you think they're gonna just go lady at each other, and they never do brilliant i agree uh, no absolutely i had no idea about this maybe you did hmm. michael says uh credit to my girlfriend for passing on the trivia that only murders was written for ron rifkin joel gray and bob balaban he i didn't hear that i have i have watched a lot of the the um um how we made it in fact they did a great interview on howard stern uh finally howard stern and steve martin had to have the talk howard's always wanted to have with them like Good. a fear talk wow um and um, and he did describe it was originally three old men, and for a long time, and and then and he so that's that's interesting that it, that it would have been them, yeah. And then he and then he finally got to a place where Selena Gomez, blah blah blah, like it evolved. But so that's what I think. I think he wrote the Three Amigos as old. I think it was, I think it was Chevy, right? Well, but, this, well this, no one ever asks where Chevy is because they know. Every, like every everyone in the world is. Yeah. You've had enough of him. I get it. So, yeah. um, yeah. Anyway. Well, but I'm also, uh, I'm, I'm, it is, it, that's an interesting group and I could see them doing totally. some great, those are three, those are three great, uh, actors that remain great actors in their senior years as well. And I'm I big, love, I love Bob Balaban. Who's also a oh, hell yeah. of a writer. Yeah. Agreed. Absolutely. But yeah, I guess, and I, and I'm interested in where, Martin and also John Hoffman, not John. I thought it was John Hodgman at first. So I, I had to check my glasses to make sure it was John Hoffman. But yeah, mm -hmm. I'm really interested in terms of how it evolved. I just read the New York Times article about the show. And no, it's 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 amazing. And it's just wow. it is such a relief. And also, isn't it interesting? The streamers are like the tortoise and the hare, where all of a sudden Hulu's like. Hey, look at all the cool shit we got going on right now. Like, I love this. I love uh, Rick Rudin and McCartney going through McCartney's catalog. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. That's on my list. Really great. It's yeah. really great. And, in, you know, it's funny. I remember when you and I were talking, when I got to see Mel Brooks uh, before Blazing Saddles, and they had a Q&A afterwards. And it, a lot of it's like McCartney, a lot of greatest set stories. You've heard them a million times. But thankfully, Rudin brings something new to the table. Great. To ask him, and especially as a producer, and they really strip down a lot of the songs. And it's like, let's just listen to your bass on Come Together. Let's just listen to this. And it's it's really well done. It's a great show. And you haven't, I'm assuming, because we we talked either earlier today or yesterday. You haven't seen uh, the Saints. The Saints. I saw it. half of it. I saw half. Of, I didn't get to finish it last night. I love it. I, I it, it already surprised me like three times, and um. We have talked years ago in the past. I already have I got a predisposition, deep soft spot for movies, movie spinoffs off of TV shows. Like, I don't like the X-Files, but I love the X-Files movie. That's hilarious. The I first one. I tell you why. The first one. Like, yeah, the first one. The other one. Okay, not the second. Uh, not yeah, like, the future, no, right? But I remember like watching the X-Files movie in the theater. I paid money for it and going, I'm totally loving this, but I never will watch an episode of the show. Oh, funny. Here's the thing. Uh, uh, like I, like I, I've not seen it in years. I'm sure it aged terribly, but, uh, kids in the hall, <laughs> brain candy. Like, love that that movie. Like, like I was like the only person that loved that movie. I love that movie. Right? I was the same way, man. There's like five people in the theater and we're all laughing our asses off because we <laughs> love the kids in the hall. 
No, Brain Candy's a great movie. I love, I do, I love movie spinoff. I so I love El Camino from Breaking Bad. I, I, I like these things are like really unique uh, cinematic experiences. So I loved it. And also I don't remember all my Sopranos lore at all. Like I'm not like, I didn't do a rewatch beforehand. So I'm like, oh, I didn't either. It, it's just holding up on its own. Well, that's the, like, that's, Oh, you're a big pussy. Okay. But and that, that's fine. That's my spoiler free advice to people. Cause Franco of art and Franco fame, tiny Titans is like, I hear it sucks. I'm not going to say it. I'm like wrong. No, I go. What's great is it stands on its own, and it informs the the relationships of the TV series. Without, I mean, it's some of it is little member berries here and there, but that's okay. No, and, the only thing that's funny is is like every ten minutes they cut to the boy who would be Tony watching saucer eyed at the violence that is that is you know and that's literally the only thing that supports it as connected to like you don't even oh, i disagree i disagree i think uh i think everybody in the movie has moments where it's like you know god i never remember the guy's name who's playing junior in the oh, movie. Corey, Corey Corey stall yeah yeah and i know he was yeah. yellow jacket and ant-man and stuff mm -hmm. i i love i and mean the original powers pilot the villain in the original powers pilot oh there you go house of cards uh mm -hmm. also i mean he was great in house of cards when he if was he would have been walker in the powers pilot it would have been on the air oh well right. <laughs> i still haven't seen it that's dude next time we're like you know one day you know i would i truly one i would day. love to see that original pilot someday but regardless um, i'm sure it's terrible <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure with with perspective i'm like no but I, but I really, everybody is coming to play in this movie. I'm very relieved that David Chase made such a good movie. I'm hearing that they're talking about a spinoff series from the movie to maybe. Fill I, in I, the I don't see why not. It was, it, it was it, so far. It's as good as the Irishman was. Yes, it, it's really, yes. really good. Uh, it also reminded me of a movie that that would be on my no life list that I feel a lot of people missed which is steven soderbergh's movie on hbo max called um no way back or the, probably it's because we've got a very generic title but uh the john cheadle movie that soderbergh just put out it's a crime oh. movie oh it's so good it's my right. my favorite movie of the year so far wow uh it is so it's up there with out of sight with soderbergh's best it it's one of those movies where you think you know what it's about when you turn it on. And then 20 minutes later, you're like, oh, it's about this. I thought it was about that. And then by the end of the movie, you're like, well, this isn't what I thought it was about at all. And I am delighted with every with every turn I took, which doesn't always happen. Sometimes you they take you down the road. You're like, yeah, I didn't want to go here. But uh, um, this one, this one's great. And I don't want to I don't want to spoil it, but it, it's got some surprises. That's I hear you, man. No, and then uh, Jimmy's like, oh, you know, spinoff. So Sopranos. No, Jimmy. Uh, it it ends with many years before we get to the Sopranos. So yeah. there's plenty of stories still to tell. Yep. And everybody's great. I bear, man, I've loved Barenthal. And here's a weird wild. No movie. sudden move. Thank you, Dante. Yes, no sudden. Oh, well move. done. Very good. Boy, oh boy. Just All I right. cannot recommend it higher. I've loved Barenthal since the movie he made with The Rock called Snitch. Where the rock is a construction guy, his kid is busted Did I for selling drugs. Uh, it's a cheese ball movie, but mm -hmm. both the rock, I mean, uh, Susan Sarandon plays the DA that wants to put uh, the rock's kid in jail. I, I accuse you of making this up. It's a real movie. And, and the rock's like, let me go undercover and find the drug source. I'll make this happen. And Barenthal plays an ex con that mm. works in um, the rock's co construction company. And that's the first time I saw Barenthal before Walking Dead. And it's like, whoa, this guy. And he's great. In, I mean, and it's he doesn't have a huge role in uh, Saints of Newark, but it's a significant role. Mm -hmm. oh, I, know. I think he's an amazing actor. I, I, yeah. I, I yeah. Yeah. So yeah. even even that shitty boxing movie with uh, Stallone and De Niro, when they were way too old to make the is movie. He in that, is he in that too? He plays De Niro's oh, son. Boxing. That's why you saw it. I'm of like, course. And, and, and I, on the first day. And also it was, you know, he plays De Niro's son. And man, he just, he, he just, of course he's De Niro's son. He totally bought it. He, he might totally actually be it. De Niro's son. Uh, he really, he's got a lot of De Niro in him. There's no question about that. No, yeah, he's really good. If you want to see him at his best, he's really good. Uh, I don't know the title again. Um, someone's going to hit us. It's a, it's an HBO miniseries 
uh, by uh, the guy who made The Wire, and it stars uh, Oscar Isaac and Winona Ryder. Oh. Came out a couple years ago, uh, and, and uh, he's in it. He plays completely different. He was right in the middle of doing The Punisher, so he plays completely off off type <laughs> from The Punisher. Uh, it's a it's a really good miniseries. You get a chance. Did you uh, did you ever get to see? Uh, did you like Ford versus Ferrari? I don't think we've ever talked about it. Oh, I did. I watched Ford versus. Ferrari. I love. I liked it a lot. You know, I and and I I know boxing. Everyone thinks, oh, you like all the manly shit. And I mean, I am not a race car guy at all. I love that. Yeah, no, no, yeah. You're like right. like yeah. I I don't care what the subject matter is about. It just has to pull me in with some truth. I I Ford for yeah, it's great. In fact, I like when it's something I don't know anything about. I particularly like movies about worlds I don't I don't I don't visit myself. Steve and others are saying, was it Show Me a Hero, the uh, Oscar? Yes, Oscar? thank you. Okay. You guys are the best. See, Lieber. See it's just like the message board. I stumble out with half a fact, and oh, you yeah. and you you give me the thing. Yep, no, Show Me Hero. It's, it's, re it's really good. It's a it's full of some excellent. Thank you, Steve Lieber. Hey, Steve, we should work together. Yes. I, I really like I, I like I feel like like I, I was thinking about the other day you you po he posted something on on Twitter and I'm like I like I know I know some of like what what his plans are so like I never bother him but just so you know I would like one day that sounds to great. Do something substantial hey man him and him and Matt on Jimmy yeah yeah no I would rather he and Matt continue to work together forever and ever and ever but if ever there's a break in it that would be cool. That's hilarious. Oh, Dante says while well, he's listening, he's got a tab open with IMDb. So he's thank you. I maybe I should do that. I haven't watched uh, the Eastwood movie yet. The, the which new, one? The new Clint Eastwood movie. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I don't, um, I'm, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not so much in a, in a mortality movies. Like you know, anyone who's that old on screen, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna th start thinking about. Well, you know, I mean, Grant Torino was amazing, and he seems to still have it. I even like Trouble with the Curve, that uh, baseball movie he made with uh, really Tim with Amy Adams and, and Amy, yeah, oh. yeah, I, it's cheese, it's total cheese. But I love baseball movies, so you kind of had me at hello. Uh, right. You know, so the other things in um, in No Life would be uh, Layla Star by Ram V. Um, He's amazing. I'm, yeah, I've read a I'm lot. Glad of, I've gotten to know him in the last year. He's he's a great, great writer. He really. Yeah, I've read a lot of good comics lately, and a lot of good comics that are coming out soon. Uh, you know, I, I, so like, I know it's a weird thing people see on uh, Twitter when we all share PDFs with each other before the book shifts, but it's uh, it's kind of a nice way to like you know see if is this something or not, you know that kind of thing. I, I so there's a lot of a lot of the creator owned books that are coming out. Like Chip's new stuff is really good. That fair, that fair, what's it called? Fairburn? What's it called? The, the, the new one. The, the, it, it, he was talking about it today. I haven't read Fairburn yet, but I loved uh, Afterlift. I, I thought yeah, Afterlift was, was really fun. good too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the Silver Coin is really good. Yes. Um, and, and what I liked about Silver Coin too was I'm old enough to know many have tried that shtick and didn't get it off the launching pad. There's been a lot of like, can you share a story through many writers and try like a premise idea, a premise anthology and, and then just like die before they even, uh, you know, get to page two. And uh, so it, it's not only did they accomplish it well, just accomplishing it all is pretty impressive. Okay. So. Um, all right. I'm radium. I'm going to ask the question. I personally sure. would say, wait and read the Superman uh, or I should say the justice league annual that's coming out. But if you want to give any other future plans regarding uh, Legion that you can reveal uh, without spoiling. Yeah, um, it's 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 Justice League versus Legion of Superhero. The the it's called the Gold Lantern Saga. Um, it will play on its own completely. Very reader friendly. I would be uh, arrogant for it to be anything but that. Uh, but if you've been if you read the first 16 issues we did. Um, it, it, it pays off some of the stuff we were teasing all the way through that, the great darkness, um, uh, who the gold lantern is, where the gold lantern powers come from and what the connection to the modern age of heroes is today. I, 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 um, boy, writing Legion is just like one of the great joys of my whole existence. Like, I can't believe it. I can't believe like I got, I, I get to write Legion and I get to, uh, do it with so many amazing artists. So, yeah. And you are, and there are more stories after the annual. 
No, the, the annual leads into a six issue uh, Justice League Legion thing they've already announced. So we were, okay. we're, we're off to the races soon after that. And I will have some more Legion news shortly. It's pretty exciting. All right, cool. And then like he also legitimately had... exciting, not 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 hypey bullshit. Vaguely at eleven o'clock at night on the podcast, exciting. And you I also know. you also said that Malib Zard is changing. So again, we can assume that another Malib Mini is coming. Yeah, yeah. So so what I what I meant to say, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. Is that instead of Scarlet, once we're done with Checkmate. Uh, we're starting a new creator owned uh, at Dark Horse. Um, and if you want to know what it'll look like, I, I think looking at his recent paintings would be a good hint. Uh, I, uh, um, uh, Alex is an artist of uh, obvious immense talent. And every time we do a project, locking down the style in which we're going to do the project itself, because you have so many things he can do. Locking down the style in itself is sometimes uh, an enormous task. And while we were planning, he started working with these new paints and he was really liking the results and posting them. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I think our new book going to look like that. And he was like, yes, please. And so that's where we are. Very cool. Excellent. Have you, uh, have you gone back to movie theaters? Have you, uh, in Portland? No. I that's still have two, mind. I still have two unvaccinated young ones. Oh, wow. Sure. Um, and yeah. also we have, we have uh, a vi vi virus history in this house. So no one's dying to take any big chances. I, 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 I'm, I know everyone, everyone live your own life and do what you want to do. I just, our, our truth right now is we're still in a pandemic. The numbers are still terrible. Commerce is running a lot of these choices versus actual public health safety. So I'm just going to just act accordingly. I said yes to the conventions that are happening right now that six months ago, I legitimately thought the world was going to be at a different place than it is right now. Yeah. And then, and, and I, 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 you know, you know, I, I've canceled maybe four shows in my life and I canceled four shows this, this year yeah. that I fully intended on going to. I was so excited for Baltimore. Oh my God. My wife grew up in Baltimore. We want to bring the kids to Baltimore, take them to Sabatino's, get the salad. We had a whole thing planned, but uh, I, I I just the the numbers aren't there right now. I, I, I dropped my daughter off at college. It was it was a freaking nightmare. Not that part. That was fun, but the traveling was just it's not it's not ready. I understand, man. And no, I was telling you off the air uh, before we started. Mm -hmm. I, I will be in Baltimore. Um, I kind of feel, and also it was a very nice gift to me. They let me be one of the Ringo's uh, judges. That's cool. Yeah, it was really cool. That was a big surprise, and I'll be so honest. Where did I win? Well, like I said, I, I sent out, I'm like, all right, where's the, where, where are the graft paychecks to nominate people and stuff? Like yeah. That? Yeah. I mean, you right. didn't do it loud enough, man. You yeah. didn't, you didn't. Well, anyway, yeah. Yeah. They made it public. It's me and it's uh, Brian Stelfreeze, which I love Brian Stelfreeze. Genius. Uh, Amy Dallin is another one. Two academics that forgive me guys. I, it, they don't come to mind in terms of their names. And I apologize, but I was really honored, especially being with Brian and stuff. And it was great because, um, yeah, it was fun. And I got, good Lord, I got a shit ton of comics to read. I have yeah, so cool. many boxes of graphic novels and monthlies and stuff. It was, it no, was I'm glad. That's good. That's good. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Right, and again, I, 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 I'm not lecturing anybody on how to live your life. Everyone do your own thing and everyone's got their own, like, you know, situation. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's just not ready for us right now. I hear and you. I, and I do, I'll go to New York Comic Con, go to Baltimore, have the best time. Uh, you know, and I'm just like, like literally the, like the last years of shows I did, every one was like a, like a life changing shit happened at every one of them. I, I, I miss doing them. I, I have like an amazing time. Like in, instead of like sitting home in my pajamas, I'm like, you know, like hanging out with my heroes and stuff and getting to meet all these amazing people. And it's, it's amazing. I, it, I, I hate not getting to do it. Like Dragon Con, I was really excited to do Dragon Con this year, and that okay. was like, yeah. I I was I'm super bummed out because I was going to go to Dragon Con, go visit the Naomi set, but no, it's just not not yet. There's no reason yet. No, I hear you, man. Um, I uh, what was I going to say the um, what streamers do you have? Do you have them all? Streamers? Yeah. What streaming networks do you have? Well, I I I I, I got a I got a lot of them. I, I'm I I'm, I'm in business with a few of them, not to be braggy, but like oh, I'm, I'm working 
I'm working at HBO Max, so you know, you know HBO Max. Uh, you know, right. Netflix is the home of Jessica Jones and Spider Verse, and uh, you know, there's you know, there's there's I, I love the Hulu. I got the Paramount Plus. I got. Uh, oh, also, we we unplugged. We I don't have cable, which shocks me. By the way, I'm like we're of we're of an age where I never thought I wouldn't have. I don't. You don't need it at all. No, it's amazing. No, I understand. If you commit to the Apple TV of it all, you can. It's a really robust situation. So. Did you did you watch for all mankind? Not yet. Okay, I will. It's on the okay. list. That's fine. Yeah. No, it's a lot. There's so time. much shit. There's so much stuff to watch. And you know what? I would have had it all watched, but instead, what was I doing the entire pandemic? Watching every single episode of Siskel and Ebert on YouTube. Oh, every yeah. single episode. Did I send you the link for the podcast on uh, Bill Simmons' uh, network? Yes, you did. Uh, okay. Right after uh, Matt Singer announced that he was writing the book that I've been writing in my right. life for the last two years. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I literally, it was like, uh, I was like, oh, I, 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 I told Matt I could ghostwrite this book for him. But um, yeah, no, I had this weird, um, this is, it's always fun how your old madness uh, manifests itself. But uh, uh, I... You know, I was uh, just sitting here, like just like eating a little dinner, and I put on the YouTube, and there was some some rando episode of like Siskel and Ebert shut up. I go, oh, I remember that. Let me like I clicked it on, and then all of a sudden it hit me, like how important Siskel and Ebert was to my formative years as a storyteller. Like it was a it was a show on television that all they talked about was craft of story, and this is pre internet, so it was the only place that I'm getting a lecture about story every week was from these two guys who were very sincere, very articulate, and very anti-cliché, right? Yes. Like yes. super anti-cliché. So every week as a young man, I'm listening to these two people yell at me about don't do, don't waste our time. And this is what it feels like when you make a shit movie. And this is what happens when you infect people with your crappiness. Like all that stuff are really was like part of, and then when I started, I like realized how many things Gene Siskel says that I just repeat, like I say them as they're my personality, but it's because I learned them from him as a child. So I ended up rewatching all of them and I got into this crazy groove of like how amazing it is that they're broadcasting from this pop culture that no longer exists on any conceivable level. Like they're talking about stuff that doesn't exist anymore. And, 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 but it's all informed us now. Like we're all nostalgic for it, but none of it exists. And I just, it's just absolutely fascinating to me. And I watch every episode of it. And I mean, and, and as annoying as it was to listen to me babble about this for the last minute and a half, no. that's what it's been like to be my friend for the last year and a half. No, no, no. I, I, cause I got more. First of all, on this podcast, and sorry, minor spoiler, they, uh, they play an interview that Siskel did with, with Paul McCartney. Forgive my regards to Broad Street, that insipid movie. Yeah, yeah, no shit. I, yeah. And it's so great because it's McCartney like, so you didn't like the movie? And he's like, <laughs> uh, no, I, I like some of the music. He's like, well, then what's the point of us talking if you're going to shit on the movie? And he's like, well, you know, Roger didn't like the movie. <laughs> and he's like, oh, great, so you're both going to shit on my movie. And it's no, like, I did like that about them. I liked that they didn't like. Like there was when we were going up, there was a lot of like uh, movie reviewers that would like say shit and then kiss their ass to their face, but not be like. But Siskel and Ebert would both be gentle but firm with their. This is what I thought of it. I'm not going to change my mind because you're staring at me with those eyes of yours. Yep. Yeah, th th that I always liked about them. Totally, man. And I and I I I knew them both on a very Chicago boy. This yeah, very distant acquaintance level, but I did get to hang out with Gene. And we did get to bet on uh, horses together at our favorite OTB a few times. And uh, Roger was always amazing. And I would go to uh, his film festivals down at, in Champaign, uh, where you have University of Illinois is. But also uh, he would be at the Chicago Film Festival and mm -hmm. introduce. That's where I learned about Errol Morris and The Thin Blue Line and other great Errol Morris movies. And that was the great thing about Siskel and Ebert was. and, and just Champion like, filmmakers. And, yeah, and we were yeah. teenagers, and and it, they really opened up our brains, you and mm -hmm. I, in terms of appreciating little movies. And thank God, I mean, it wasn't, it was never at the level of where New York and LA were, but Chicago would get movies, 
and get indies mm-hmm. and, and you know and, and that's the only other good thing about streaming is thank god there are more platforms for people to, all across the country to see little movies and things and i think that's terrific you gotta you gotta seek them out but you're right no man he they they developed my taste in, in movies a hundred per a hundred percent and and like i i even wondered like if my my obsession with mammoth just came from them just like they just like sure. Because once you hear them talking about it, you're like, oh, I, I was I hypnotized? Like, but uh, um, I, I, you know, after the podcast, maybe tomorrow, I'll post a couple of uh, my favorite that I just think are really interesting time capsules. Right. Um, one, one, of, I did post the other day. One was called "The Future of Movies" from 1990, and it was a long, it was a long form interviews with uh, Spielberg, Lucas, and Scorsese, and Scorsese just finished Goodfellas. Uh, uh, Spielberg, I, I don't know what he it was like the weirdest interview. He was there, like, uh, what do you think about the new tools for filmmaking? He goes, We don't need them. I'm like, You're a year away from Jurassic Park to talk about we don't need any more tools from you know. So that was it's just everything about it's fascinating. Uh, and then there's this one episode that I've been talking to my friends a lot about because, um, um, like, uh, we've experienced this a little bit where even in comics experiences this where a comic can come out and it's a big hit or it tanks, but then 10 years later, it's thought of differently. Right. Like the, the, like it happens in movies all the time. Like, like you're like, like you, like you think that movie was a big hit. You find out it wasn't a big hit at all. No one saw it. Like, but it, it's footprint is large. Right. Um, there's an episode of Siskel and Ebert, where they reviewed two movies of the same week, one of which is True Romance, which they completely dismiss as crap. Why are these great actors in this piece of shit? It's so fluffy. There's nothing there. But this other movie, Californication with Brad Pitt, they kind of declare it like the beginning of a new era of film. Yeah. Like this movie... Is going to be like, and they completely missing that two weeks ago they reviewed Reservoir Dogs and that it already happened. Like ah. this, 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 this flag in the sand of new cinema that they're looking for came two weeks ago and they missed it. Dismissed that one completely too. Reservoir Dogs as well. Dismissed. Hilarious. And California Cation, this, which is a good movie, by the way, but it is not. Right, it wasn't. The sea it change. is not Easy Rider. It just right. isn't. Right. right, it was not the sea change. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and so watching them talk about these movies in the moment that way, I send this to a lot of my friends. I have some friends in film and television too, who who, you know, you worry about like, well, what, like, what's 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 the history of this going to be? And like, and that's the cool thing is that you never know. And I'm I'm experiencing this with some of my work as well. Is the stuff that was an enormous hit when it came out. It's kind of gone where stuff that wasn't is is a bigger hit now than when it was when it came out. Sure. Right? Yeah. It's absolutely fascinating. I'm not making any judgments. It happens to everybody. I'm not whining yeah. at all. I'm just how interesting it is that like this sells more now than it did when it came out. And the other thing, it's gone. Right? Ebert's, and then, Yeah. Ebert's books on film, you know, both his collections of his reviews and his books on film criticism in general is fascinating. And I yeah, always yeah. think, I, I remember on Fresh Air, Terry Gross once played this great clip of Ebert talking about how the movie La Dolce Vita hit him at different ages of his life. Mm-hmm. And when he was a teenager, he was envious of the lead character. I forget what his middle period was, but by the time he was in his middle age and later years, he's like, this guy's an idiot, this mm-hmm. young man. Mm-hmm. Who is the star of you know the character that's the lead and everything? So yeah, it's uh it's you know, again, I, I love that about movies, and I never really thought about it that way, but it's absolutely true. And I have found that myself. I mean, we all have favorite movies when we were little kids, and you go back to them now and you're like, Holy shit, what what did I see? <laughs> you know, much like a uh, Hawk the Slayer, perhaps. Uh, yes. <laughs> again, that's my brother. I don't think I've actually ever seen Hawk the Slayer. I can't speak of it. I, I I cannot, I cannot speak of it. The no, other no. one, if, uh, um, as long as people are still with us, uh, the other one oh, is yeah. um, uh, they got to the movie. They, they were so dismissive of the Coen brothers, like completely interesting dismissive. He, the I hate, hate, hated this movie was um, was uh, raising Arizona. I totally forgot that one that star. 
Raising wow. Arizona, piece of shit. See, Hates it. And I, I didn't he waits like all the way to Fargo before he goes, you know what? Maybe we're wrong. This is a perfect piece of film. We may have been wrong about all the others too. And I'm like, ah, oh, they did it. They got there. It's you know, Blood Simple rubbed me the wrong way when I first saw it and then came back to it and appreciated it now. So I guess I can see that too. Yeah, yeah. See, and I remember even uh, with them being this big influence on me, I remember I, I was early on on the Coen Brothers. I was That's all cool. in. I had this weird, ex like I saw Raising Arizona in a movie theater. I had no idea what it was. And if you remember, like the first 10 minutes of Raising Arizona is like the last 10 minutes of Goodfellas. It like, it's told very fast. Montage. A lot happens. It's yeah. an enormous amount of very funny plot. And then just when you think that's about a movie's worth of plot, they roll the opening credits and like, oh, the movie just started. That was the move. That's the start. Yeah. And that's that's a great feeling when you well, that's what you're going to see. And that happens. And I came around uh, to them by the time of uh, of raising Arizona and everything. So, no, I get it. Yeah, yeah, I finally I finally saw one of these. Alex, I I may I highly recommend that you revisit Miller's Crossing. Miller's Crossing is a brilliant crime movie. It is one of Albert Finney's best performances. I couldn't recommend it higher. I know. And everyone, and Steve, everyone's with the, the big Lebowski too. I remember seeing that in the theater going, what, what just happened? Oh, I loved Lebowski for the But it, it takes you a couple. Yeah, but, I, but yeah. especially being the noir fan that I am, I'm like mm -hmm. a stoner just walked into the big sleep and is just all right, far out, man. And it's just, and I did, I just loved every like, idea behind it and stuff are you a? do you watch noir alley forgive me for ancient films but uh the well you don't have cable anymore turn a classic movies uh you know saturday no, but I, ha I have the apps i've got the apps okay good because yeah, I, I have access to all the channels i just don't have cable anymore. okay because eddie muller uh has been on a couple times on the show since the pandemic and i'm so glad uh i love his taste and I and my education on a lot of the old stuff has only expanded because of that show. And also, Turner has been fascinating in the last month or so. They rebranded themselves. They've changed the logo. They're trying so hard to grab a young audience right now that in their prime time, they're showing more 80s and 90s movies than ever before. And it's like, I get it because they are 30 or 40 year old movies. So they are old. Oh well. You know what? Somebody on Twitter today posted um uh, uh Alan Davis's Batman and said this is probably one of the best Batmans of the modern era. And I I, I was like, that's 40 fucking years old, buddy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Mike Barr, Mike Barr now. Yeah, it's great. Best. No, it's fantastic. Beautiful. It ain't the modern era, and no. y'all gotta look well, at the calendar. Well, and it reminds me of when, you know, Jenkins went through the shit of whatever editors he was dealing with where Batman never sits down or all that other bullshit. And it's like, you know, Batman used to smile. And and especially mm -hmm. when Al Alan Davis was drawing Batman. And mm -hmm. I, my my favorite, and I think you and I have talked about it, favorite moment like that was when Sherlock Holmes shows up in one of the detective, like, anniversary annuals or whatever. And Batman reaches over to like light his pipe and he's like, oh no, no, my son. And he goes, you know, that's ornamental at this point. That's not that's hilarious. I go. But it was, it was just, and just mm -hmm. like the smile on Batman's face that he's enjoying the fact that Sherlock Holmes is with all these great DC hero detectives and stuff. And yeah, yeah. man, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, come on. So I, I was genuinely um, as, as surprised as I was when people were angry at me about John Kent, I was delighted how people were into our Batman and Batman universe. Like, like, cause I knew it was against the grain of what was going on in a lot of Batman projects. Sure. Uh, but it just, what was it, that? That's what was in my heart. And I, I was so, I know I, I was so, I like that about the Batman audience. They, 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 they get it. They're up. It's Batman, right? Sure. It's, it's, it's all Batman. And, By the and way, every situation ahead. I've had Batman in, he's with someone he really likes or admires. Like I've always had him in a, in a good headspace where when he's in his monthly, he's always about to get murdered or, or like there's something bad's happening. I always have him in a, in a, in a pretty comfortable place, which is a weird place to be with him. Yeah. By the way, I love uh, Robert. I love Damien's role in uh, checkmate. I think it's been great. Thank you. I love Damien and, and, uh, and Damien would have been like a big part of the 5g situation, but where, where, where they're going with him right now. And Josh's book is great. That's Perfect. cool. And Perfect. you know, 
And that reminds me too. So Infinite Frontier, there's an opportunity, and we've even seen it in a couple stunt books where they've had crossovers of the 39 Batman and uh, you know uh, Superboy, you know uh, Silver Age Superboy, and uh, you know Commandy and all this other stuff. Are there are there those kind of crossover stories that would appeal to you in any way of taking characters from different eras and, and smushing them together? Yes, but there are also other things very interesting to me too. Sure. Right? And again, uh, very super pri privileged. And I always feel like skeevy saying that it's it's uh, I I my from the, from my Marvel decisions up to here, it's all of my heroes did stuff that scared them or like even Steve, we're talking about Steve Martin. Like he's every choice he's making as an actor on that show is not his normal thing. Yep. Right. He's trying new things and yep. you see he's scaring the shit out of himself. And when I see my heroes do that, it, it inspires me. Even if you fall on your face and blow it completely, bravo for trying. Right. I, and, 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 you know, when opportunities like this come, I, I think of that often. And what's the scariest thing I can do for myself? That'll be, and and then, because as we get older, I can look back and go, and that's the stuff I'm most proud of. It, it just is. It just Brian, is. I, yeah. I mean, literally, for the last eight years of my life, I'm, I, I mean, really, as when 50 was kind of haunting me, I'm like, all right, what haven't I done? And you know, I, I've I've said this before on the podcast. Mark Schultz, the great Mark Schultz, Cadillac. Love Mark Schultz, course, wonderful guy. All right, so it's me, him, and Remender in a green room in Cincinnati, and I'm like, "So what are you working on, Mark?" He's like, "Well, I want to do this. I want to do that." He goes, "You know, I want to do it before I can't do it anymore." And Rick, in a very reassuring way, is like, "Hey, Mark, you're not that old." And I'm like, "No, what Mark is saying is we we know the clock is running. Let's mm -hmm. get the shit done that we want to do mm -hmm. before we run out of time." It's, you know, yeah, we know, we, we know we can still do it. And like every day there's like an opportunity, right? Yeah. And yes. the like, and the, sometimes they're like micro opportunities or macro opportunities. And like, yeah. uh, and I, it's not like, it's, I, it's, you, you, you're making comics. I don't want to oversell the bravery of putting out new stuff, but putting out new stuff can be very scary to the soul. It can be very like, I am showing you my ass and it's all, uh, and, and like, all right, I'll, I'll say this, even though it's it's um, here. Here comes my ageism. Um, I was like, it's 2001. I published my first comic when I was in college on the national level through Diamond in 1991. So this is officially in my 30th year as a published author. That's insane. It's crazy. I don't feel it. Doesn't feel that way to me. I don't feel like I have 30 years of experience behind me, but I do feel like. The, those experiences have allowed me certain uh, things that I, I now know about myself, right? And I know, like like anyone, you know when you're full of shit and you know when you're not, you know when you're not listening to the little voice in your head. And uh, and uh, these, some of these opportunities in front of me, if I don't take the balls of your choice, I'm just an ass. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a big ass. And I'm, you know, I, I think I like, like, oh, I'll, I'll Siskel and Lieber you again. They did, they did an episode uh, called The Doctor Is In, and they picked three uh, careers that are like, why the fuck are you doing this? And it was uh, uh, Burt Reynolds, right? Yep. Uh, and remember Burt Reynolds in the 80s, coasting like no one's business, right? Uh, John Travolta, staying alive, John Travolta. Fair enough. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, and Woody Allen at, at the time. Uh, again, that's a whole other conversation, so. We'll put way outside, but listening to them talk about these um, excellent storytellers making lazy choices um, uh, speaks to me a great deal. So I, I so a lot of the choices that you see me making right now are me at least scaring myself. And again, I know comic books. It's I I, I have so the thing is I have some friends with some actual scary jobs like firefighters. So it's not like like. Like uh, sitting here staring at Batman, going, "Oh, what's the scariest thing I could do?" But it, I, I do. I get, I get anxiety and I get, I, I get nervous. Launching new stuff never gets easier. So here I am on my thirtieth year, telling you, it never gets easier. It's always scary. <laughs> God damn, it's no, official. I, like it's not like next year. It's gonna all of a sudden be, be like no big deal. It's always gonna feel this way. 
All right. I feel I see people commenting. All right, here come the glasses. All right, go ahead. Look at him. All right. Stan Pucci, everybody joining us. Welcome, Stanley. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What questions did we miss? I think we're doing fine. Uh, okay. Again, you know, like Dante just asked about uh, any thoughts of revisiting Jinx. And you've you've answered. Well, that. I uh, I, I have I have been revisiting Jinx because of uh, um, some Hollywood stuff that's going on, and we'll see what happens with it. And if nothing happens, I will tell the story. I'm hip. Yeah, I'm hip. I, so it's happening like right now. So I'm gonna. I was gonna suggest because again, sometimes you want to leave them uh, wanting more. We can wrap. I mean, we I, can I wrap. if you if you're if you're yeah, listen, it's late for you. Yeah. No, first good. of all, uh, my kinescope show that I do with Gabe Hardman, which I love. By the way, why I felt comfortable enough to bring up my Siskel and Eber shit is because this is the Kinescope show we're preempting. Which exactly was 40 years earlier than Siskel and Ebert, so you're 100% right. But no, like, all right, so we, you know, it's Parker, Gabe Hardman, me, Ian Brill, usually. And uh, when mm -hmm. we're we do it for an hour, mm -hmm. and then we proceed to talk for another three hours off the air and hang out. Oh, and they're okay. all West Coast guys. And I'm usually up till three or four in the morning my time. I don't care. I'm not punching a clock. I still get shit done. So okay. Uh, all right. Here you go. Okay. Here's here. Me. Let's let's do some questions before we hang up. All, all right. right. Do you, can you please ask for some Silver Age DC recommendations before he goes? Anything, Jimmy Olsen. Uh, um, I, I I posted this the other day, and uh, if 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 Steve, if you're, if you're still on, he can he can attest. Um, uh, uh, we started doing deep dive reads into the silver age, Lois and Jimmy stuff. I was doing Lois and uh, Matt was doing Jimmy and uh, Matt every once in a while would like text. Uh, I'm sure Steve too. Me and Steve, like these, um, uh, he, uh, he, I, I'm a lizard monkey. Like Jimmy's a lizard monkey. Jimmy's married to Jimmy. Like there's like all like, like the craziest stories. And these stories were being created like in the vacuum of just get the book out. Like what, like, and you can tell they never thought this stuff would be collected or, seen again by anyone over the age of three and uh there you go and um uh and and so there's something about that that's even more delightful and more creative and more crazy because they would never get done today but it like kind of frees you like you'll never be like we as comic creators today would never create stories as nuts as these stories are uh is hellblazer a property only for the inhabitants of the isles to write or would you tackle it given a chance uh, uh you mentioned it earlier that you no know, it's funny because like that's another character i i seem to write like almost every day like he's um right he's he's um in a lot of stuff we're doing i have a big coming up in the next issues of justice league uh it's going to be a justice league justice league dark crossover and i'm going to do like um like all of them like so, I'm writing. I'm writing both teams for a couple of issues. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's tired. All right, let's, let's wrap it up. John, John's got to get tucked in. No, 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 no. My my eyes haven't closed. Right. I haven't nodded off. Uh, right. Your X Men run was not so well received when it was first published. It's absolutely loved now. Do you write with stuff like that in mind? Well, in this instance, and this is this is specific to X Men. Uh, uh, I knew. Uh, as a fan of X-Men and having some of my best friends be writers of X-Men prior to my run on X-Men, I had heard what it's like to be the writer of X-Men. Uh, it is, uh, it is, it was described to me as uh, the, the fans that, that they never want what's in front of them. They always want what was back there and what's coming. They ah. never know what's on the plate in front. Ah. Again, this is a generalization of the highest order. And if, if any of this doesn't sound like you, then I'm not talking about you. But if it sounds like someone you do know, then you know what I'm talking about. So uh, I, I, I took the gig because it was the scariest gig at Marvel. Going back to what we were just talking about, about what's the scariest thing you could do. The scariest thing you could do is write the X-Men after you were the writer of House of M. After you came up and ripped the mutant population to smithereens, coming to go, hi, everybody. Yeah, yeah. so um, I walked into the X-Men franchise, known only to X-Men fans as the guy who killed Professor X, depowered all your favorite mutants, and the Scarlet Witch stuff. So I had already come into the X-Men office with the... Uh, um, 
reputation of a serial killer. I don't know how else to say it. Like, it wasn't good. Like, I, I wasn't a blank slate. I was coming in with some notoriety. And then, and and so, and, and I was coming in with a big idea. I was coming in with the uh, the, the kids coming to the present day for right. um, Days of Future Now. So that idea uh, also could be perceived as scary. And I'm introducing seven new mutants. Oh, not new mutants, goddamn. These are all things that some, not all, some of the f- uh, fans have trouble with. Why do they don't like the new characters? Because they want Nightcrawler to have more screen time. And if you're introducing seven new characters, Nightcrawler's not getting a screen time. Oh my God. And you just redesigned Magneto? Well, I have a Magneto costume that I wear every year to Chicago Con, and you messed it up. So F you, Bendis. So all F of these things were piled on a- at once. Uh, at the same time, uh, I, I, I was, um, I knew the work we were doing was honest. Uh, like we were coming from a very good place. Stuart was at the top of his game. The art that there's no, there's not a bad looking issue uh, of any X Men book I did. Both Stuart and Chris uh, at yeah. the top of their game. Uh, and so, so I was very empowered by all the collaboration I was doing, and I liked that I put new X Men into the toy box. It felt like a lot of people come to X Men. And they kill a lot of things, right? And I was like, well, let 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 us because now knowing that I'm coming to the X Men uh, with some notoriety, let's come in with presents, gifts for for someone, right? Uh, what what I what I'm so grateful for uh, to Marvel and to John Hickman particularly is um, with the new X Men run. And I didn't know what was going to happen. I did hear through the grapevine. I wasn't part of the plans anymore. So, you know, I, I, I taken myself out of the loop. So I'm hearing through the grapevine, your stuff is part of that stuff. And I said, oh, they're, they're going to fuck up all my stuff. Like, I like, they're going to, they're, they're, they're killing all my babies. It's okay. It's part of the, it's part of the game. I was braced for it. And then all that lovely stuff with like gold balls being like the linchpin character to John's thing was so freaking lovely and not expected at all, not at all. And also John had a tendency to take some of my ideas over the years and elevate them way beyond where I would have gone with them. And I was sure. always grateful yeah. for that um, as a collaborator and just as a fan of John's, just felt like an honor, if that makes sense. Uh, so so I was sitting over there at DC feeling very honored that that – because I, I know what John had done from, from the history of X-Men, from all the stuff Chris had done, by doing what John had done, he kind of cemented my stuff as, as like a must read. And, 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 and I really appreciated that. Uh, that not necessary, not, not, not asked for, and, and, and such a gift. So, and, I, and by the way, think about that often when I'm pursuing work on other people's ideas, the, how, how that felt to me how empowering that felt and what a compliment it was. Like, what can I do for other people to feel that way too? Understood. Dante would love Long to see Long answer. You. Sorry. Not at all. They won't. But it's, it's X-Men. It's, There's no short answer. That's exactly. And it's a bit, yeah, it's a big fucking tapestry. Absolutely. But man. I will tell you, my son, during the pandemic, <laughs> how is discovered, he? he's great. He's Good. great. And he discovered the X-Men movies, which is really its own Marvel universe, right? Like he was in the MCU yeah. and he had, he wasn't even old enough to even like care, like even want to know about them. So he, he finally like saunters his way into the X-Men movies and well, he's just eight years old. So he thought Apocalypse was the best movie he'd ever seen. Ha! He's eight. No, it's it cool. blew him away. That's and good. I had to sit there with a poker face and let him just fucking enjoy it. But w- inside me is a Twitter monster who wants to go, no! <laughs> Dante would love to see what you would do with Green Lantern and the GL core. Obviously, you're going to be exploring the Gold Lantern and tying mm-hmm. it to the modern day. So that's coming up. I don't, and he says- And see it this way, and because this is the way I see it. I, I'm doing something with the idea, like I'm adding to the mythology of the Green Lantern Corps without in any way touching all of that amazing work that's been done, which I think is sometimes a problem that like amazing work gets done and then other people keep piling stuff on top of it. And I I, I think this is an opportunity to, uh, um, to do it. And also I, I, I'm, I think they're doing really great work on those Green Lantern books right now. 
Uh, you know, I, I'm going to bring up Evan's comment because I would disagree sure. with him. Okay. It's funny how much restrictive censorship caused wild zany ideas in the Silver Age that inspired sparks for things of the modern age to explore with less restriction. I think at the time it wasn't so much censorship. It's just that a lot of the Mort Weisinger Superman was a reflection of current pop culture. And that's why you got Jimmy Olsen being a caveman beetle or uh, Alan Funt and Candid Camera and Pat Boone uh, showing up. And again, I know these are references. People don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but they were modern. It would be like if uh, Simon Cowell had, would show up in a Superman comic today because of American Idol and all the other shit. That's what was going on. And as weird as it looks now and like, what the fuck are they doing? It's like, you know, or, or. Red Crypt and I would make uh, Superman with the giant bug head and stuff like that because we had a ton of those movies and stuff. So that's what I think inspired that stuff. The great thing is, I do agree with you, Evan, is that, yeah, now modern writers can you know, like take that sh shit and go to town with it. What are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, no, and but I and Evan, I also, I think uh, I, I disagree with, with John a little bit. I do think it was part of it. Um, uh, but I, I think there's also, it does seem when you read them with, with a modern lens. And again, I completely could be projecting onto that. It's some of it sounds like this is due tomorrow. You know, like, like sometimes you see someone's homework and go, oh, you did this last night or you took two weeks to do this. And, and some of these look like, and, sure. uh, but they're not bad. They just look like, um, you see the same thing with some Kirby stuff. You're like, uh, like, oh, he did this all last night. That's amazing. Right. So. Yeah, it's, it's it, absolutely. Also, I they I don't think they think it would still be in print fifty years from now. I don't think they thought anyone would be talking about it. I thought they I, thought it was like a like a Bazooka Joe joke. It's for well, that and moment I, and that moment only. And also, I just love the fact that the Should I tell them what Bazooka Joe is. No, no, no. <laughs> Bazooka Joe. That's always my. When someone tells a lame joke, I'm like, what are you writing Bazooka Joe uh, comics now? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Um, no, I was going to say, I love the fact that the reason why we have a Jimmy Olsen body of work is because Jack Larson was so popular on the TV show. And that one other point that Marty Pasco, the late great Marty Pasco, ma made to me when George Reeves died, there was a thought for a while to take old Superman George Reeves footage and kind of build a new Jimmy Olsen show around that footage. And thank God they didn't do it. That's a ghoulish, that is as ghoulish as any idea there is. Yeah. And also, yeah. again, that, that tragic old problem of Jack Larson's doing five years of Superman, like, well, nobody knows me as anything else. And I'm glad he was able to reinvent himself and get involved with the New York stage world as he did. Mm -hmm. and You know, the various things that he did with his career. But, um, yeah, you know, I mean, that's that was my problem with the the Birdman movie that Keaton made, where it's like, oh no, I can't be all these other, th I can't act anymore because people think of me as this Birdman character, and I'm like, yeah, that was a '90s problem. That isn't a problem anymore. I, I mean, but it's, it's no, it actually still is for certain actors. It's it, well, I will agree with you. It isn't Tell the. Me. It used to be a complete problem. Like if you yes. didn't know that person, that Adam that's kind of like what Steve Martin's writing about in Only Murders, like. That guy, Great, Brazo. <laughs> yeah, he is Brazo, and he will never be anything but Brazo. And he just he is he is seventy. That is it, right? Um, so so, and and that's the case. But what I am, I find myself fascinated about which actors can 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 move on to yet a, another iconic idea, or or just move on to to act in more things, while others can't, uh, or, or or Hollywood won't allow them to. Yeah, I guess uh, I can't think of recent examples because I'll look at Christian Bale, what he was able to do after the three movies. I think Downey is showing that he can do whatever he wants. Well, what you see now is you see a uh, these actors have a machine around them. And the minute one of them becomes Batman, they already start planning their exit. They already start planning yes. the other things you're yes. going to do while you're not Batman that'll make it that you're an essential actor once this is over, right? No, like, you're right about that. Clooney did it. I mean, they, they, you, uh, you, you don't, you don't put all your eggs in the, in the, in the basket. You see Paul Rudd doing it perfectly. Paul Rudd does it perfectly because he, he, even with every, everything he's done, he, that's a perfect thing where he could get stuck being an Ant-Man for the rest of his days. Not going to do it. No, I hear you, man. Jimmy has a good question. Sure. Is there an actor you based your Batman off of in Batman universe? 
That's interesting. No, that's a good question. I don't think there was. Sometimes there is. So I'm, I'm trying not to. Um, there were, there were, yeah, because there was a voice. I had like a tone of it. But yeah, and yeah, and sometimes it's an actor, and most of the time it's Gene Hackman at some age. But uh, it, I, and I don't think I had it at, 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 at this point. It was really, I, I must say, my primary concern was doing right by Nick Darrington. Um, Nick is uh, someone who I would uh, just became friends with. And I went, oh my God, he's a genius. Like I went, like, like I, I, you can look at my Instagram from years, a couple years ago. I, I posted, I went to his house and found volumes of his notebooks and each page was a brilliant illustration. Not a sketch, a full illustration of wow. Batman and the Super Friends and Doctor Who and like any and Blake Seven and anything you can think of. And I was like, holy shit. And then he was like all excited to work together. And I was like, well, this is, this is all about, this is advanced level, all about making sure Nick is, is, is you know, this is a okay. precious jewel. And, and, and so, and that, so that's, that's where my, my head was, was creating a Batman that spoke to how I felt about the DC universe at that moment and spoke to what Nick can do as a, as a creator. I understand. I guess Fraction had said that there was a specific Batman actor in your mind. So maybe you forgot, who knows? I will let you know if I think, but I don't think there was, I'm really, yeah. And it certainly wasn't one of the Batmans that we, we know it wasn't. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think. No, nope. I don't know. I'll let you know. Yeah, I understand. No, I understand. Um, yeah. All right. No, I, think- I was, I was inspired by just, I, I, I said at the time I was inspired by Nick and I was inspired by this um, quote by Frank Miller that I had found in the um, Batman encyclopedia. Uh, Frank Miller had written the introduction to the Batman encyclopedia and in it, he described how Batman was unique to all of pop culture because he's the only character that you can go as dark as they go with Batman and go as light as Lego Batman. And sure. everyone goes, yeah, it's still Batman. And no one even questions it. You couldn't do that to Harry Potter. You couldn't do that to Spider-Man. It's, 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 there's, there's a, there's a, like a, like a, like a zone that they live in. Right. But Batman could be anywhere. And that was such a freeing idea that that's where that's where our, like just to go with our flow on Batman universe came from. I understand. I guess uh, Jimmy and I don't know if he's trying to remember what Matt said, that it was Gene Hackman from the Royal Tenenbaums. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, and uh, by the way, Tamira, I agree. Uh, brave and bold, man. Uh, 70s, yes. 70s, brave and bold. 100 percent. Oh my God. But I will say I didn't set out to write Brave and the Bold when, when I got there, I got halfway through and I go, I'm writing Brave and the Bold. Like I, I was, I, I was aware of it and then delighted because I love Brave and the Bold. That was the best. Yeah, absolutely. All incarnations. Including Raul would love to see you write a Spectre series, uh, noir detective style. That'd be yeah. Cool. You know what? It was on my list of things to do. Uh, one of my, my best friends, Taki Soma's favorite character is the Spectre. She loves the Spectre so much. And I, and, and, and I was trying to get to a Spectre story with her. I just, in, in the wonder comics, I just could not, could not find the time to do it. Oh that. man, I understand. No. And someone asked earlier uh about uh, the future of Takio if that's still a possibility. It no it it very much is. Uh, it, our our problem uh Mike Taki and myself is that we have um things that we want to continue to do. We we want to continue powers. Like we finished the graphic novel said, "Well, that was the best experience we've had so far as creators together." 20 years in, our best experience was the last graphic novel, which makes you want to do another one. Right. And then we're like, no, let's do new. We got to do new. And like, like the, what, no, yeah. what's the scariest, what's the scarier idea? What's the more challenging idea? And also remind yourself again, like, like the powers mountain, like the Marvel mountain, the powers mountain is climbed. You did it. You got a TV show. You got literally got it published by every publisher that publishes comics, published powers. Let's do something else. And, and I was so happy for talk to hear, that she's finally writing and drawing her own book. Oh man, That's let better. me tell you, and I, I don't want to pre-sell it too hard because I will when the book comes out. I have read every single word of that book so far. She's it's it's a a, a collection of uh, short stories uh, of a woman who has been through a lot 
and can get there in her art. It is real art by it's. I I just I'm 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 in so a. I admire it so much. It's so it's so true art. She really dug deep, and I'm just I, I'm so impressed with it. I, I'm so proud of my friend. I, I can't even tell you. I understand, man. And again, I I mean, we're acquaintances from the Benesport days, and we've become better acquaintances in in subsequent years. But yeah, man. And I told her the same. I basically told her the same thing in terms of God. I really always admired her art on the Benesports, and it's so nice that she is getting the time and then putting herself in the space to, to put these stories out. I, I just think that's, that's wonderful. So it, it's one of the best parts about doing this for a living is that when you have like friends or collaborators that you just root for, you just like them, you just like their shit. And then all of a sudden they roll up their sleeves and they go, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm shooting, I'm going for it. And then, they, and they, and they get there or they don't, but boy, they tried and look what a mess you made. It's both, both things are just so impressive and so much fun to be part of. It just, it just is. You know, you're always it's, good. It's, it's the part I didn't know. Like there are parts of this I thought I knew in my head. And then, and now that I'm in it, like I didn't know that part was going to inspire me so much all the time. Like, you know, like every day I get to read like Matt Fraction stuff that like, like Steve, Steve, we like Matt's writing on stuff that no one sees is like the best like prose writing I've ever seen. And no one gets to see it, but like us. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm almost moved to tears sometimes by how good it is. And it was just like a, like a, like a, like a pitch document. Wow. It's just, it, yeah. It's just, it's just brilliant. Yeah. That's cool. And by the way, November, him and Elsa. God, I love that. And it, I it was so great to meet Elsa and get to know her now. And now she's going to be a word balloon regular every few months and I'll be bugging her. No, she's brilliant. And it's he drops great. this off in my house in the first version of it. Literally, he was kind of on the down low about it and he just hands it. I think that's what he wanted. He wanted like a cold read. And I, I never, I, I've never I like literally came up to a fellow writer and said, where did this come from? Literally, like, like, you know, where it comes, like, you know, other writers don't ask other writers where it came from. We all know, know where it came from, but this, it, it rattled me. I couldn't believe it. No, it's a really beautiful story. Absolutely, man. And again, I'm so happy for Elsa. And it's like, I'm like, you know, you are like so like one minute away from everyone going, holy shit, Elsa is Chartier. And, uh, and by the way, I was very pleased. She was one of my nominees for the Ringos that I'm like, you're goddamn right. You better be on there. And she was. And I was like, good. good. So, good, yeah. Good, good. All right. Here's a good process question from yes. uh, B Things. Maybe a silly question. How does one carve out time? To make art and comics when your life is filled with other obligations. I'm swapped with grad school and struggling to find the right balance. That's a balance, point. man. And, and again, how many times has this subject been brought up with us over the years? It is, a, yep. it is very, very hard. And I can tell it's an, it's an ongoing concern. You got to every day, you got to look at the day and say, all right, where, where am I? Where am I needed the most, right? And there are certain days, and it's so hard because my my instinct is to hover over my kids all the time. But like, like, also, they should have time to themselves, right? So like, 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 like it's like this, this, um, just making sure that the people who need you know you're there, right? That that that's what I, like like really know, like really know. I will, and then, and then, and also. You know, for for creative people, like we can we can tend to torture ourselves and not take care of ourselves. And by not doing your creative work, you could actually be hurting yourself. Like like your emotional state could be affected in a bad way. Um, for those of you who know, like mindfulness and dialectic thinking, you can feel the balance and also the pull to create your art at the same time and they're both right. So what I what I really try to do is make sure a that everyone who is physically in my space feels how how much I love them and how much I'm there for them and and then at the same time understands um not not that like daddy needs to do his work that like I'm going to do my work and I'm like, we're all doing our work and we're bringing that happiness together. Like I, I share it with them. 
So it's not like something I'm keeping from them or it's separate. It's like, like, oh, you guess what daddy's doing today? Like I, like I make it part of our, all of our lives. So like everyone's involved. And this is also stuff I learned over trial and error, you know? And uh, if, if I like, didn't have like amazing relationship with my kids, I'd shut up about it and go, oh, I don't know. But like, but, but I know like for, at least for now, like, 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 like my, my kids, they, they know they're safe and taken care of. And I still get to get my work done. And also just the, uh, getting, getting, getting it done. And that feeling of accomplishment can be very helpful to your mental state. Like even, like, I'm, I'm not talking about like, if, if, if again, if it's your job, that's another thing. Like, yes, uh, other, also getting your work done and getting paid is also helpful in your mental state. But I'm just talking about the, the craft of it, the, cre the creativity. If you're pulled to create something and you deny yourself that, you're probably abusing yourself in some way. I, like literally, like, I don't mean to be like dramatic, but it can be that bad. Like if you feel the desire to play music and you refuse to do it, that's a torture, right? And, and you're doing it to yourself. So I always tell people, uh, do it. Do even if you don't think you're good, just do it because you might just like how it feels to hold the guitar or how it feels to type. Some people just like the feel of the clicking and the clacking and the typing, all right? And, and you don't have to show it to anybody. And just, but you feel like a better person. And if you feel like a better person when you're done with it, then that's part of the balance. Now you can enter the other part of your life not only sharing it, but the best version of yourself. Because what you don't want to do is come into your life having denied yourself all of that. And now you're in this other part of your life and you're being crappy and shitty and, and depressed and, and not yourself and, and not being mean to everyone, but you're just not yourself because you're not being true to yourself and your, and your needs as a creative person. I'm sorry if I'm over explaining. It, again, it's a very complicated subject of which there is no general answer other than you got to wake up every day and feel it. But what a lot of people do is deny themselves that that's their, their answer is either deny themselves or they ignore their family. <laughs> it's an extreme and neither one of them is the right answer. Yep. I'm, I'm uh, responding to Gormanator who uh, wanted to know if uh, we're going to get more uh, powers, um, uh, collected volumes and stuff. And yes, under, under yes. the dark horse deal, Go ahead. All powers will be printed. And just so people are clear, inside the powers, the best ever graphic novel is the previously published issues seven and eight that were going to be part of a story. I looked at the story and redid it as this graphic novel. So this look at the graphic novel as issues seven through 12 of the, of the new volume or as its own graphic novel. There you go. Yes. And one other process question from radio. Yes. I'm stuck in writer's block, unable to figure out how to give my story an ending. Hopeful, depressing, grounded. What do you suggest? Uh, a, a few things. Number one, um, uh, defy it. Uh, there's a few ways. You can just defy it. Just go, fuck you. I'm typing anyhow. And fucking type a recipe. Uh, fuck, uh, type your five least favorite Siskel and Ebert reviews. Just start the flow. Start, start, start the ball rolling. Um, sometimes just the act of the typing and the, and the, and the, and, and the, the, the brain work starts the creativity flowing. All right. Other thing is to walk away from it too. Again, there's, there's, this is not go for a bike ride, go for a thing, go. I wasn't joking. Go do laundry. Guess who did 7,000 loads of laundry during this pandemic? Me, because every time I, 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 I would get to like a lot of people, a high anxiety of, of stress about uh, are, are, are there, are there going to be comics next week? I don't even know. Like, you, like, like so much of it was out of our hands. Right. Yeah. So um, uh, I, I, I've applied a lot of what I'm talking about recently. It's very hard to write hopeful Superman stories in a pandemic. It's hard to get there, but I, I, I did, I got there and a lot, it would involve, a lot more time than it normally did. It would involve uh, Legos and uh, like stop thinking about it. And if you stop thinking about it, I mean, really stop thinking about it, not sit there and go, stop thinking about it. That's not, you're still thinking about it. I'm talking about empty your head and it comes right out. 
it, fly, it flies right out. And I, I know it almost sounds like a cliche. It happens to me so often. I, 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 I often laugh while I'm typing, like I chuckle because it happened again in, 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 in spite of everything I thought would happen. Uh, so one of so, our heroes, one of our heroes, uh, Mike Nichols always talked about that, about, about letting yourself let go and how important downtime was and really putting something away to relax your brain to allow the subconscious to do the heavy lifting and everything. And you'll find it. So yeah, man, I, for you, it's bike riding for me and, and laundry, uh, swimming always has been this great mind clearing. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of focus on swimming. And then all of a sudden, boom. Yeah. Know. I'm a cyclist. That's what always, always did it for me. But like, yeah. like Matt runs like uh, all, all, so many of our cardiovascular really seems yeah. to kill like three birds with one stone. Yes, go, oh, good Lord, you got out of your chair for 10 minutes. But also, that blood flow really does help the ideas get to the brain. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. Oh also, um, the other thing, and this is some just writer's block techniques that, that I've learned over the years. Um, the writer's block may be coming from uh, you haven't fully figured out your story part yet. Not the, like this part, there's, there's a transition. You need to get, you need to get to the ball or well, whatever's going on in the story. And you just don't know how to get there. So it's because you, you, you're in what would be in real life, a boring part. Like, like, you're like, it's, it's real. Like we're, we're like, I'm just going to make something up. We're, we're going to a party, right? Well, you know what? Sometimes going to the party is not the best part. Just get to the fucking party, right? Skip it. Just skip it. Just go to the party. Everyone knows what it, what it's like, unless the story is about the journey to the party. Right. But if the story is about the party, then just get there. See how much, see if uh, getting to the, the good stuff doesn't get you to the actual, no, it's not the good stuff. It's the stuff. That's the story, right? Um, the other thing to do is write something that's the opposite of what you're writing right now. Um, you're writing a personal story. You're writing a sci-fi story. Whatever it is that you're writing, write something else. Just use another muscle in your in your um, uh, musculature and and see and see if that doesn't shake it all up. All right. Or um, also write something you don't like write something like terrible and sometimes looking at something like a terrible sentence. I'm not talking about subject matter. I'm just like, like a bad idea. What's the worst idea you're thinking? Sometimes you're in the writer's block. I just have a bad idea. Write down the bad idea and look at it in black and white. See if there's, it, it, sometimes it can shake you into the good idea, like startle you. It's like a, anyway, it's a trick someone taught me once. It does, it's a, put it, manifest it, make it real. Now make it just like this, this thing in your head. Put it out in the real world and see how horrible that feels. And that'll shake it right out of you. <laughs> or you might see it typed up and go, actually, that's not a bad idea. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is, yeah, maybe it's, it's comics. It's a very fine line. <laughs> brilliant and stupid is a very fine line. <laughs> to quote the uh, great Spinal Tap. Ted Lasso, yay or nay? Oh, total yay. 100% yay. Full blown. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, me too. And I'm also of the belief, I, I was arguing with a friend last night, I will not name them so they are not shunned for this, thought that the second season was crap compared to the first season. I disagree wholeheartedly. I I, 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 I just had the lovely uh, uh, instinct, impulse, and occasion to rewatch all of Larry Sanders, which is uh, uh, not, didn't age well in the subject matter department, but, um, but uh, uh, you know, what was amazing about that show, which is very similar to Ted Lasso, is the first season, they're trying something new. They're all in, but they come into the second season knowing it worked with this little, like a pep in their step because it's not like a, like, a, I think this is going to work. Oh, no, this is working. We, got, we almost got the green light from the world. Do it again. Do more. Go far. And you see, watch that second season of Larry Sanders. It explodes. They really, the energy level is like twice what the first season was because they know they had it. That's how I feel about Ted Lasso. Like, oh, they, know, they know it's working and they're going for it. That's fair. Is yeah. Elisa excited for uh, Strange New Worlds on Star Trek and uh, second season of Picard? 
she's way into Picard and on a level that would that I think you two could have a great podcast together. She's well, not, yeah. I've told you before, I've told her before, I really want her on talking about like the business side and how she handles yeah. things. But I would love to have her on to talk about Star Trek. Absolutely. You the, know. the business side would be really good for some people. She she yeah. she she actually had an she really did great this year. She did some amazing stuff. But um uh I I have watched this woman. This woman has no quality filter on what TVs she will watch. She's <laughs> I'm right up there. I can hear right now. She's there's something going on up there that I uh -oh. Like, like I, I need to count on you for story. I, I need to be able to look you in the eye and go, is this a good idea? And now I don't know if you know what a good idea is. <laughs> I, as I told her before, I am with her on Farscape. I will defend Farscape with her to you until the end of time. Yeah, that, that's when she lost me. Was that I, the think I remember. I remember. It, it, I mean, the only <laughs> thing that made me question the marriage. <laughs> but yeah, new Star Trek, it's like, all right, I don't know if I know you anymore, but okay. It's but a, you know what? You know what's great though. We're at such a great age of sci-fi. Oh God, yeah. I it's so much fun. I get to because I was because I'm the nerd in the house. I'm always one that finds the trailers first. So oh, there's a trailer for Brave New World, and I run up to show it to her, and it's always like I made it for her. It's always like I like I've I'm, I'm always the one going, hey, there's the Picard trailer, and then she always looks at me with like, oh, you brought me a Picard trailer. And I'm like, well, I didn't make it. <laughs> Yeah. Did uh, I haven't seen physical yet with Rose Byrne on Apple TV? I haven't seen it either. Is any good? What do we I, got? I, yeah, I don't know. Are, we, are yeah. we getting a um, oh, oh, shit. okay, you know, um, was Farscape the one that had the blue girl, the, the blue woman yes. on it? Yes, all right. I once did a, a show a in Australia and I told you this, this story with, with that actress, and I don't remember her name, but Virginia Hay was her name, man. I liked Farscape. I'm telling You're you. Good. Man. Anyway, so Virginia was was quite a was quite a character on our Australian tour. Uh, that's all I'll say for now. She was uh, she's quite 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 something. You can kind of uh, you can kind of tell she was on a different wavelength. I I you know so yeah uh, okay. Uh, at the end of the convention, one of the people brought up came up to her table and brought her eight rolls of toilet paper. And dumped it on her table and said, I brought these for you to make sure that your precious butt was properly wiped to your satisfaction. And he was being completely like he had, she'd been so mean to him the whole weekend that that's how he was ending it. And she completely went, Thank you. We wow. probably cut that part out. Wow. <laughs> she didn't get that he was being, he, he was being sarcastic. A lot. Obviously. Yeah. 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 That's hilarious. That's it was very, like 20 years funny. ago. It was like, I ago. like it. I like it. That's awesome. Um, well, I, you know, I think we're there. I, okay. I, you know, I Someone this popped up said webcams, chat, hot girls and boys video chat. What the hell is going on? I here? have no idea. Are Emily. we being scammed? Uh, here, I'll put that user in a timeout. There we yeah, go. Yeah. Bye bye. That was funny. Yeah, I know this ever happened to us. Yeah, and everyone, God, honestly, I am always, I, I don't have moderators. I am always watching the chat. And I am so pleased to say, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I've had controversial people on, depending mm -hmm. on where you are on the political spectrum or the no, common state political. spectrum or whatever. Yeah. And for the most part, we have good, responsible people that, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. participate. Yeah, I didn't get any, no one trashed on me, right? No one did no, anything. Okay. No. So, um, I mean, I was, I was, I was, it was hard to hear that my X Men run wasn't well received at the time, but I guess I'll, <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll I was wait. talking, I was talking to Jock one time. I stopped putting uh, my feed on Twitch because there was a guy that thought Jock was incredibly uh, good looking, which he is a good looking man. Jock but the artist? Jock the artist, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. And the he really man. got rather racy with some of his suggestions to Jock. And I was trying because sometimes, you know, you want to put on a, a comment and sometimes the chat will jump so you have the wrong one. And one of them landed. And poor Jack, and he he totally rolled with it, and I couldn't apologize enough afterwards. And he's like, "Oh, it, you know, it happens, John. Don't worry about it." And I've been able to since edit it out of the video, but it's only the people live got to uh, experience it. But yeah, man. oh, I've done I've done Reddit AMAs. I can handle it. No, no big deal. Oh, absolutely. No, I'm a, I'm man. interested the the uh, Dante that you're saying the uh, the Charlie Kaufman uh, comparison. 
Very interesting. I, uh, I'll, I'll, I, I, you, you, you piqued my interest. I will take a look. I did. I, I saw the commercial. And I said, I wonder what this show is. I wonder, like, you know, the, we again, we're in uh, comics too. We're in, we're in such a glory time. We're such a golden yes. age. There's so much good stuff that it's hard to get to it all. We have even talked endlessly about what we do in the shadows. The greatest thing that's ever been created by man. Oh, indeed. I'm sure I'm surprised that hasn't come up. Um, yep. Yeah, another fine show and another fine movie, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, you, are you liking Ted Lasso? Or are you? Are you? Oh, I love it. I okay. love it. Yeah, right. absolutely. No, no, no. Absolutely. No. You know, I'm, and, I'm, and, I, and and for those who didn't get a chance, I did get. I did rewatch the first season. I did a rewatch to see if it was it held up, or or was just us feeling that pandemic stress through his anxiety attack. Uh, it's better the second time, and also. Um, I was, um, I don't know what I was looking for that I didn't see it. He has anxiety attacks in the pilot. He's a mess in the pilot. And I remember it like, kind of like he, it, it like sneaks up a few episodes in. He has one in every episode. He it's introduced as the premise that he's not well. And he's so delightful that it doesn't play off that way. And I, I, I liked it even more. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's right there. Yeah. So I mean, other people may have, have caught it right away. I, 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 I didn't. Yeah. No, that's fair. There you go. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. Uh. Again. Wow. We're at three hours. You want to wrap? All right. We can stop. Okay. Well. Yeah. I, yeah. No, okay. dude. Beautiful. And and again, hey, everyone, Dante, hours. everyone hanging out with us. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. That's very very cool. I was hoping we just hang out, be safe, and chill and talk. So this is very very cool. No, and, and truly, we have a core that really has stayed with us for the entire time. So I thank you all very much. Thank you, everyone. We'll start putting out the audio uh, tomorrow. Great. So that's great. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, all right, Radium says how much he's uh, loved the Superman run. Absolutely. Thank you. I was uh, blessed with the, some of the best Superman artists of all time, from Ivan to Kevin. To, uh, like Again, like my X-Men run, there's not a bad-looking issue in the book you may you may hate my guts with a fiery passion but uh the the books are beautiful uh i hear you man no and leaving libra stayed with us very nice thank uh, thanks steve i hope were you inking during this you're inking right okay good Probably. Probably. On board. Okay. mario okay. thank you very much absolutely you. well and, uh, yeah uh, i will i will end uh uh as as everyone does with a shitty plug you ready please all right pl if you could uh please do us the favor of pre-ordering Joy Operations from Dark Horse at Previews World. Uh, you can order the uh, Stephen Byrne or the David Mack cover. Both of them are beautiful and gorgeous. Uh, the book itself is absolutely stunning. What you see on the cover, every page looks like that. Um, it's The whole book is fully um, uh, created by Stephen, just like Pearl is created by Mike and David and Zoo do cover. Um, so, uh, and Alex did all of the Scarlet. I, I, that wasn't a plan, but I, I, I kind of really like that that happened. So, um, uh, and not, not just us, but uh, you know, in these times, any book you see that you really like pre-order them, you give them a little, that's the best way you can support a book. It helps the store. It helps, um, everything. And I don't push hard on this all the time, but, uh, on top of this weird system that, that is comics. Um, we're having supply chain issues because of the pandemic. Um, so paper. there's paper issues. So it actually helps a, a, a lot if you uh, uh, pre-order. It really helps uh, us decide what we need to do with what we have. I understand. And yeah, I mean, again, these are the challenges that we're dealing with right now. Um, and uh, no, looking forward to Joy Operations. And I'm glad Jinx World has found a new home at Dark Horse. And uh Glad the DC stuff is chugging along as well and really interesting stories. So as always, my and I will tell you what, here's, here's one thing about um, joy that I haven't said out loud before um, that, uh, that uh, it's a weird thing to say, but if I heard this, it would make me buy the book. Um, she works in a city called the Jonando trust and Jonando is the word I type every time I typo commandy <laughs> i i'm typing real fast and every time i write commandy it comes up janando and i go what the fuck is janando oh commandy and and then and then i go and i i put the word aside and i said i must make janando a thing 
I, it must exist. And that's the only way I'll be free from this commandy curse of <laughs> typing it. And, and that's what I've done. So I wanted, I feel like there's only one group of people that would need to hear this. It's you at 1130 at night or whatever, 1230 at night on, on, on a Monday that, that you, only you will know that, that, that that's me typing commandy like an idiot. Jornando. That's good yeah. to know. Uh, Mario wanted to know is, if it is it, it or not going. Is Joy Division. Joy Operations. It's not. Yeah, Joy, Joy Division is the band, of course. It's not Joy Division, and it's not Smooth Operator, which I often, in my head, I go, Joy Operations. Anyway, That's hilarious. So, yeah. Sade. Where Sade. are you, Sade? We all miss you. She was awesome. I it is, it is a miniseries, but we're hoping it is uh, the beginning of a, a series of miniseries a la Hellboy. Uh, obviously, uh, completely up to you. Um, we do that for two reasons. Number one, uh, who knows of me and Stephen, we're going to enjoy the process. We are fully enjoying the process. So I hope we get to continue to make more. That would, that's that cool. would be my goal, like we're doing with Pearl and Cover. That It would be great. That's cool. By the yeah. way, I was not the oldest person at the uh, Green Day, Weezer, Fall Out Boy concert at Wrigley Field. There were people older than me. No, Billy Joel Armstrong was. <laughs> It was such a great show. Too. Yeah, I think I told you we were. I haven't been to a show in years, but like the last one, I was at a Sting concert, and I was like, "Man, look at all these old people." Uh, uh, last... I literally said to my wife, "I think we're the youngest people here," and she looked at me and goes, "No, we're not." You know, uh, when his Broadway show, his musical, mm -hmm. they were pumping the music on State Street downtown Chicago, right in the loop. Oh, that's cool. Well, yeah, maybe no. not really. Yeah, because I mean, I, I love. Well, Sting. You're not in mood for it. I, guess. I love Sting, but I, I didn't care for that uh, that uh, musical album. I'll be honest; I, I wasn't a big fan, and I still love Sting. I don't yeah, think I, I, heard, I don't think I heard it. I don't. I don't yeah, think I, well, I and again, it. hey man, every everyone has a shitty album every now and then. It happens, you know. All so, right, all right, we're done. What writing program are you using currently? I am. Oh. Uh, I still use Final Draft for everything, including the. Um, the modern update just made it just, it's such a powerful, I know other people get, get shitty about it. I love it. I use it for everything. It's Fair very, enough. very, very helpful to me. Just, all right, we'll end, we'll, we'll end on a factoid. And, right. I, and I know final draft is a little pricey. Uh, try any screenwriting program, see what, see what feels, if it flows, it's working for you. I'm with you. I'm with all you. Right. I, and I'm very that. rare, by the way. I'm very, I'm one of the few people that uses Final Draft for comic screenwriting. Uh, just so, so we're club. Most of my friends use Microsoft Word. I think Microsoft Word is is a is a crime against humanity, and I don't want any part of it. <laughs> I hate it. I hated it in the 80s. I hate it more now. Every time I have to pull it up because someone wrote something in Microsoft Word, I have to open it in Microsoft Word. I get <laughs> All right, excellent, man. All right, let's let John go to sleep. The guy's no, exhausted. No, no, no you got to you gotta give me at least two or three minutes before we hang up on each other. Okay, but, absolutely. But everybody, uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, and uh, great week. Uh, J.M. DiMatteis is uh, going to join me tomorrow. Ooh, I listen to that. That's, That's awesome. That's going to be fantastic. What else you got coming up? And uh, Snyder on Wednesday. Great. I j oh, yeah, Snyder's got some good stuff. I just got a peeky peek at, the, at the, all the Comixology stuff. There you go, and mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, we're uh, you know I mean beyond that I'm I'm uh, you know aiming towards uh, next week and beyond for October, and I hope to have uh, we mentioned the Spectre. Hope to have uh, Tom Andrake on and Jan, and Jan Dursma uh, together, husband and wife. You should also just have Taki on screen in the corner, just not saying anything. Ooh, that'd be so a good people idea. can watch her like spaz out. Absolutely, and uh, I you know I don't know if you caught it. I I, I talked to Ostrander. Um, oh, I know I missed it. When was August. this? It was in August. It was okay. right after right after the movie came out. It's like, all right, John, victory lap. I, I okay. have watched uh, quite a few episodes. I'm sorry, I don't get everything, but I, I did quite a lot. So right. you know, yeah, Jesus, like I, yeah, I, there's like, a couple I, times I call in, like I, I want to argue, but I, 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 <laughs> I wish you would. Okay. It's you're always welcome. I love when you chime in, but it, uh, it no, went, no. The, the the conversation that spells out my head says, "Don't, no, don't do it." <laughs> I understand. By, all right, and Radium, uh, I love what uh, Philip is doing uh, on uh, on uh, his books as well. And I, I so do too. For I, 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 uh, Philip is a, a new uh, acquaintance. Um, it was uh, a genuinely 
really nice handoffs. You know, some of these handoffs are weird. They're just, it's, you're, it's, it, it is like, like Matt always described. It's like you're in a relay race and you've gone to like, you're, you're still running while you throw the baton at someone and they, and they keep running with it. And, 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 and you can do that clumsy or you can do that uh, well. And uh, I, I just, he was delightful from the minute I, uh, we met. And I, I, as Thank I said, you. I'm thrilled where he's taken ideas and, brought them further a real yes and kind of kind of collaborator and i think that's really cool and, so and I, I, I i i yeah i hope he, i hope he has a long and phenomenal career and another oh by the way doing anything for fandom are you on any fandom panels dc fandom no no i don't think i am okay okay yeah, there, are, there are there are panels with my stuff in them but i i i haven't i i have a i i, I need me to blank I, I did a scott snyder and Jody Hauser and I did a uh, oh. uh, uh, New York Comic Con panel that's coming that, that I thought was really intriguing. Cool. So there's 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 content out in the wild that will be coming. Uh, well, if, you, if everyone wants to check out the one I did that I think you'd really get a kick out of that I don't think a lot of people caught was um, uh, the Apollo Theater hosted a a panel about the history of Luke Cage and they invited uh, David Walker, myself, the showrunner from the show. And Joe Duffy to come and, and I'd never met her before in my cool. life. Yeah. yeah, it was a great conversation. Wow. I, oh, I, I really, yeah. I, yeah, I and Joe Duffy was like, uh, like I, I think she thought we were like, like we were like, oh my god, it's Joe Duffy, and she's like, what? Like you know, <laughs> like we were like, oh yeah, it was really amazing. That so sounds check out check out that conversation if you get a chance. It was it was really good. And unlike this show, when the panel was over. They sent like a, a refrigerator box of, of swag, like yeah. unbelievable hoodies <laughs> and Afro picks. And, and I was so grateful. They were really good stuff. John, nothing. 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 Not a goddamn thing. Not, a God, not even a word. 15 balloon. fucking years. I know. You're Do right. I have a, like a, a mug with John's face on it? No. 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 Nobody wants that. Good Lord. Come on. All right, All right everybody. Well done. Good job. If I missed your question and it's bothering you, uh, please hit me on the Substack. I will be doing a Q and A on Substack. Yeah, and, awesome. Uh, John, I don't know how you feel. I feel that this was a return to form for us. This felt like uh, putting on a, a old pair of shoes that you love. Uh, uh, so let's get back to this as soon as humanly possible. You know it, buddy. Yeah, no, no, right. absolutely, man. You know, I, I wanna I wanna make sure you get your family time, but you know you're always welcome back, and I'm really glad. And no, this was a blast. Uh so uh Harvey Air Road Fest wanted to know if you ever thought of writing something for theater, a play. I think your mastery of dialogue would be a blast. Big fan. Well, yes, I have. Uh, number one, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a huge fan of playwrights. I like literally that's when I'm reading for fun, I'm reading plays. That's where all the dialogue comes from. I, oh, that may. Uh, some of you are going, oh, now I understand. But I do. I love the musicality of dialogue. And when it's done well, there's nothing better. So I read a lot of plays. And then um, a couple times, I yeah, I did. I, I, I wrote some, I just to see if I could do it. So I wrote it for myself. And and you'll find it when I'm, when I'm gone. And, uh, um, uh, but also I've had the opportunity twice uh, I was hired to write uh, the book for a Broadway musical uh, uh, once for Spider-Man, the musical and once for uh, 101 Dalmatians, the musical, neither of which uh, happened. I'm going to uh, write about both of these experiences in uh, a fortune and glory that I'm writing and drawing that will be coming out uh, sometime. Like I've, I've, I, I, I don't know if you saw this, like a, a few months ago, someone posted um, uh, the, when, when the Spider-Man musical was on Jimmy Kimmel. I didn't see it. Go on. You see the clip? All right. No, I didn't see the clip. Well, you see it, and you see it out of context of the hype of the show. It looks doubly insane. It looks really crazy, right? And it's exactly the show that was described to me when I was hired to write the thing. Um, and so I, I wrote, and and I know I haven't told a lot of people that I I was even uh, uh, even uh, even timely involved with. Uh, and again, I didn't write the show that was. That was out. I was hired years before to be the book writer. And what happened with me in the show ended up making the show go away as it should have. Like I, I thought I had done a mitzvah. I got the show to go away. And I was um, 
uh, uh, happy about that. I was, I was, I was proud of that. And then it ended up happening anyhow, years later, exactly as, as, as they described it to me. Uh, I posted on Twitter, um, you know what, I should write and draw a 400 page graphic novel about my two weeks as a writer of the show. I was only on the show for two weeks, but it would be a 400 page graphic novel. And then I went out and played with my kids all day. And then I came back to Twitter and there was like 2000 likes on the post. And I went, Oh, maybe I should. And then after I thought about it for a while, I thought, cause I was always like wrestling about like how to do fortune and glory, the Marvel years. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like there's interesting stuff. Sure. I, I saw, we've talked about it stuff. We've talked about other stuff I've never talked about, but overall it went pretty well. It's not that dramatic. It, like you need real drama. Fortune and glory works because I was getting my ass handed to me. Right. Like, uh, like, Hey, we created miles and it worked out pretty good. It's not that it's not, you know, that's not worth like a story to sell someone. And, but the Spider-Man musical boy, that really, that really does check a lot of boxes and, and, and allows me to describe my time at Marvel with the, 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 the base of this in a nice way. So, uh, I, I'm going to do that and I'm saying it out loud because I have to draw this thing. And, and if I, the more I say it out loud, the more I have to do it. You know me. If I say it out loud, I'll do it. Because now I've embar I, I, it's embarrassing if I don't do it. I'm so now, now, now I'm doing it. Uh, and you can thank Matthew Rosenberg for getting me off my ass and getting me back to drawing again. So. Oh, that's great. That's yep. excellent. I, another guy that I love. Absolutely, man. No, I had the, it was, Matthew hit me for that cover uh, for his new book. Yeah. And, and uh, knowing full well my DNA of comics, I would never say no to him. Like I, I would never happen. Like knowing how kind my um, people were to me, that I, I that I, I of course have to uh, pay it forward. Uh, so I, I, and also it's Matthew and, and and I love them and I'm happy to do it. But but getting back to the drawing board is an enormous task once you've left it for 20 years. So um, I I'm back. I did it. And then like a day later, Jeff Lemire uh, texted me, hey, will you do a, a cover for Primordial? And I'm like, I'm getting cover work now? Like, like this, is a, <laughs> this is a fucking weird pandemic. <laughs> anyway, so, um, uh, so get, but getting back to do those two covers like got me back to drawing. And then, and then what it got me back to do is I sat down with Mike Kentucky and they helped me through the new tools. And, and, okay. and, and I, as I said publicly, Mike, polished up my cover and made it look professional because it was not so awesome. I'm getting there. yeah That's so anyway great. so 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 uh one of the projects coming out of everything we just discussed will eventually not this year but i i've written it will be me writing a drawing of fortune glory uh, uh, around the spider-man musical that's, that's and that's all of it is stuff like only like fraction and joe casada knows like a lot in my wife, like, like, like a lot of it. I never went, went public with because it was weird. <laughs> there you go. All yeah. right, everybody. There's a All right. Now we're going to hang up. Absolutely. It's been an everybody. hour since we said we're going to hang up. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. All right. Everybody stay safe. Uh, are you looking for a final question or no? No, I'm just making sure. I, I always feel like I, 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 I hate blowing people off, who especially they stayed up with us all night. I didn't want to do that. So if, if there's a question I miss, particularly a craft question, I'm here for you. There you go. All right, All right. everybody. Stay 